Lock in. Dead air. I know. Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside podcast. My name is Joel Moran, and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. This is episode 346. In this episode, we are going to preview the AFC and NFC championship games, talk about the Bills championship window, Titans hiring Brian Callahan as head coach, Jim Harbaugh to the Chargers, Bucks firing Adrian Griffin and hiring Doc Rivers, and the Heat trainer for Terry Rozier. We have a jam-packed show today. Do. How you doing, fellas? Doing bittersweet. Bittersweet. I, I say bittersweet because the news obviously just broke. Jim Harbaugh uh, going to, to Los Angeles. I'm gutted leaving my Michigan Wolverines after winning the championship. It's terrible, especially going to the division rival. But I say sweet because Riv and I got to actually play in our, our basketball league. And this is the, the part I love most about the show when we get to just chop up bullshit. But we lost by 18 points. We got smoked. Honestly, we did. <laughs> Uh, but why I'm kind of excited to talk about it is, remember when Riv was telling you guys about how I'm not that good at basketball? I played like shit the first time we played. You played better than Riv? <sighs> Unfortunate <laughs> truth. No, you did not. I played better than Riv. <laughs> now, no, I'll say this. What I'll say this. Crazy. Now, I'm talking shit. I definitely had a good game. Riv didn't have a bad game. Uh, but what was funny about yesterday was, there was a point in the game where it was a seven-point game. Right in it, and this is a team that had just won two cha- two leagues in a row. If if I'm not mistaken, one. that's what they were told. That's what two one. No one. Excuse me. So seven point game. We're playing well. We started off a little sloppy defensively. I definitely didn't play that good defensively because when you're on transition, my thought process is you pick wh- whoever's near you. So we were stuck in the mindset of man, and so our defenders were just trying to find theirs as opposed to just finding nearest. And so then my guy, of course, would be the guy that's open in the corner, and then I'm now I'm taking heat for it, which is fine. But in transition, you pick up whoever is near you. So it's a seven-point game. The ref was pretty bad. A bunch of calls that he missed blatantly. Riv's driving to the paint. He's not getting a whistle. I respect Riv. He was consistently driving. Even though he was getting hit. He was getting hit. He was that's getting banged correct. But no there. whistle. I think he got one call. So <laughs> he was taking a beating. <laughs> So like, one time, got an and one. He called it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he didn't just call it and one. He called an offensive foul. That's what it was. So Riv made the bucket. Called an offensive foul. Riv loses his mind on the ref. You can't do that, especially you fucking got NJ. Up. Play. I did get teed up. So he gets he, <laughs> he gets teed. He gets teed, and then uh, our boy on the team, shout out Seb. He gets teed because he was just not having with this ref even before that play. He had a play where he takes the ball and just. Chucks it at the ref. You see the ref. He's about to tee him, and he's just like, let me relax. Let me calm down. <laughs> Didn't tee him. So I sprint on the court, and I go and get Seb off the court. So then R- Riv gets the offensive foul. He's yelling at the ref. So then Seb already had enough. He starts screaming at the ref. So then Seb gets a tech. So he's like, fuck, give me another one. So he goes, and he double tees him. He gets ejected from the game. <laughs> They get what they get five technical like, free throws, yeah, five, five free or throws. six free throws. And they got the ball. So it was and I a, think they scored oh on that God. possession. They're, they got yeah, they got ten so, point play. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so we were down seven. They get these five or six technical free throws. I think he missed one of them. So it was a double digit point game. We were cooked after that, regardless. But I was happy. I haven't played organized basketball in oh my god, since my freshman year of high school. So I, I scored nine points. I was happy. Hit three threes. What was the final score? Uh, we lost. I think it was seventy four to fifty. Eight. Yeah, seventy four fifty eight. Yeah, he's lying to you guys. He didn't play better than me. <laughs> no, I did. He I did. did. Riv's well, Riv's well, three point percentage the was like zero for seven. The only thing. Oh, damn. The only thing he did was he hit more threes than me. That's what it was. I'll be honest. First shot of the game, yeah. cash. I he was, was feeling the moon. it. I was doing moon. I was. I got the money on my and, back. And just ask him who dimed him on all of the threes. Well, he definitely did dime me on on two of them. The one I made, and then the other one that I should have made. Threes? Yeah, I had three threes. One was in pull-up transition. I felt like Kobe. It was it was gas. I felt like more like Curry because I just pulled up to the spot. I was ah oh, dang, um, but I was happy because again, haven't played in a while. Uh, was a little nervous about it. Came out and I cooked. Uh, the one thing that I will say of Riv is we got we got work on his jumper. We got work on his jumper <laughs> pretty him? pretty severe. Um, I had a couple good looks, man. It just it, didn't fall. I'm an off the dribble type of shooter. I'm and you know how I knew rhythm shooter. Uh, 
It's just if it's there. I wouldn't call it rhythm. If it's there, he's taking it. So I was telling Riv on the ride home. I was like, yo, bro, we got to work on some mechanics. And I, and I could feel him listening to what I was saying. He's like, all right. <laughs> no, dude, keep that in mind. Because if there's one thing I do know, it's how to shoot. So I was just like, yo, just keep that elbow. And he kind of shoots a little bit wide. And he's kind of like, just like, um, like Lonzo Ball. Lonzo when he Ball when his shit was broken. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's, that's the one thing I think we have spoken about. So he kind of shoots elbow out. I told him, bring, God, bring that in, line it up, and let it go. So I was feeling good. Shots were falling. Defense could be better. You see, he didn't speak on the defense uh, that, at all. He just kind of. You were playing good defense. Yeah, I played, uh, I played solid defense. he played. He played. He played a solid B minus defensive game. That's, the the, the and team he, in and general played. And like here's that. the thing: <laughs> I'm giving him a compliment because nobody played good defense on the squad. Where's Not the a single person. Hmm? Where's the effort? Yo, it was crazy because they no ran, was they ran the same play 25 yeah, times. Yeah, they did. Or they run. Mike, I'm guarding the point guard. He brings the ball up. Yep. They run two back screens yep. on the blocks. Yep. Dude just comes off, and he's open. No one's switching. Nobody's switching. Nobody is just silent down there. So we're all just like looking at each other when we get the ball. Like, yo, what the fuck? All right, we're going to switch the next play. Then it happens again. Nobody switches. So we're looking at each other again like, yo, what the fuck? And it's just like. It's just nobody was talking. So first half, it was obvious. Nobody was talking. We were getting cooked. So second half. I played way better defensively in the second half than I did in the first because we actually were communicating on screens. So if he got screened, I'm yelling, pick up. Because that's what you should do regardless. It's just if you don't hear it, you're not doing it. You're just following your man. So that was one thing that we definitely could be, but we could be better at next game. But uh, rumor has we're playing against the best team in the league next week. So we're 0 <laughs> 2. I just saw the game, though. I had about eight, six, and like four. That sounded like a very climatic 18 point loss. One yeah. Of the, one of the biggest in <laughs> no, history. No, we were down seven. It was going a good game. Like, we were it, it was a good game. The score, uh, For sure. And then the technicals cooked us, and we fucking we, we beat ourselves. Now, the techs are hilarious. Dude. I'm not going to lie. Uh, no, he was Him I getting was pissed, ejected. Bro. When Seb got ejected, I could not believe it. Yeah. I'm just like, what I only got doing? a tech because I was yelling. He was like this, and I was yelling, and he's like right there. I feel like I was like, oh, because I was even asking the other ref. I was like, yo, you saw that? He was like, no, yeah, I get what you, why you was upset. You know, you're going to call it, call it both of you. Like, yeah, he's being a dick. Yeah, the other the other ref I was talking to, because then after I was trying to play nice guy to the refs, go out to them, talk to him, be like, yo, you know, apologize for all that. But if he's getting hit in the arm going up, even if you think it's minimal, it's a foul. Especially when they're driving as much as they are. So that was pretty, that was pretty unfortunate. But definitely a fun first game. You know, I love that you guys are playing basketball. Playing basketball is fun. It is fun. Yeah, I got to get back into it. I just got a treadmill in my room upstairs. So you put that on IG. Yeah. The, the one time Joel pulled up to LA, we went 3 0. We did. We did. Oh. He, he hit a couple jumpers. The shit was lit. This it is was after lit. the second game. Bro, I'm like, oh. Dying oh. Shit. Yeah. Oh. That's, it was lit. And though. that was another thing that I underestimated how winded I was going to be so early on. My legs got heavy quick. Yeah. It's that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So today. That's when you ain't hitting shit. Point, like, yeah, facts. You got to play defense. Like, OD. So that's why I was happy I was making my shots because then, you know, it allows me a little bit of leeway on the defense yeah. side where I know, I know that I was not that good in the first half. But I made a point of emphasis today. Hit the gym. Hit the treadmill. Do at least 10 minutes of consistent running. But it was fun. Definitely excited to, to play the season out. Remember when we were doing our New Year's uh, resolution episode and we were just giving some New Year's resolutions uh, for the new year? Uh, mine was trying to be more productive this year. I was trying to stop procrastinating. And I feel like I've gotten a lot done. And I feel like I've gotten a lot done because of Magic Mind. Magic Mind is this new like energy shot kind of drink. It has a lot of great Body ingredients mind. in it. Matcha, nootropics, adaptogens, immunity, you get into like a flow state. It can be a coffee replacement or you could drink it with coffee. And I've felt like in my experience, I've kind of been more aware of what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't been procrastinating as much. And you can see it. I mean, on the Joel Moran show, I'm posting every day. Oh, yeah. You've been very punctual. TikTok, all that. And I'm just You're that roof? managing my time better. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pop my mag magic shot before the mag show. Magnum was what you about to say. Whoa, whoa, whoa easy. That's okay. for my private life. Uh, but when it comes to the magic shot, I pop it before the show, feel a little bit more in tune with the conversation. I feel like I can focus on what you have to say, even if I may not want to. But, you know, I just be a little bit more locked in in our conversation. So that way, we yeah. can put the best show it possible. It really don't taste bad. Like, sometimes it doesn't. you get these yeah. and they taste like grass it tastes or good. dirt. It, it tastes pretty good. For You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. it is, it tastes pretty damn we good. Just, we, me and Joel just took a sip and we was arguing for 40 minutes about Terry versus Devontae. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it definitely gives you that type of energy for sure. And that's why we were late to the show. Everybody we was saying... Having a, a little mini debate before we got in here yeah we were arguing for a long time and that's why it took us so long to go live but yeah this tastes like kind of like a juice and it doesn't have much sugar in it or calories at all 
I think each serving side is 21 calories. 21. It's not nothing at all. So sit it down. If you guys want to support us and the show and support Magic Mind, you can get one month free when you're subscribing for three months at magicmind.com slash J A N pick a side. And with our code pick a side 20, you can get an extra 20% off, which gets you to 75% off. This only lasts until the end of January. So hurry up before it goes away. They sent us this beautiful packaging. We have 15 in each box. They gave us 30 total. So two boxes. And we've been taking it, and I feel like it's been doing some great. great effects for us. I feel great right now. Why'd you, why'd you say that, Dels? Say what? What you said before. Oh, you know, there's allegations out there. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you get a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> you get a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon, though. Yo, yeah. shout hey, There's no football this Saturday. True. Yes. I am. Both games are on Sunday this week. I did that four o'clock. I got to drop. You know what, bro? Game. This is what I've come to the conclusion with with Riv Academy is stop bringing it up. Just the more we coach. bring it up, the less he's going to do. Like we got to be on his ass. Nah, I feel like that's not helping. <laughs> Clearly, it hasn't worked. <laughs> no. <You> know, <laughs> Clearly, approach. it hasn't wrong. worked. New not approach. Wrong. Yo, shout out to Jazzy Juice. Said Riv sounds like slow mo, low key. Now I find that <laughs> ironic. <laughs> ironic for the idea that you put up a picture on Twitter. About me looking like slow mo. No, that is so funny. it's pretty ironic that they refer to you as. I'm slow-mo. way faster than slow mo. He is way faster. You are. That's one thing I got to work on too. Again, to the to the bucket. I've been thinking about it too much and not do it. But You're too I fucking just, slow, bro. I'm not. Uh, he's lying. I'm not on defense. If you no, nah, I get cooked. If you're fast, I'm cooked. But offensively, I'm definitely able to hold my own. I just got to be able to to do it. I get think impressive. about it too much. Facts. Yeah. I see the five and I and I start to think about it too much that they're gonna collapse and I just go and make a move and, and, and put it up yeah. make a pass. and kick. You're hundred percent right. You're hundred yeah, percent right. I don't care who's right. down there. I'll be honest. No, Riv. I'm telling you, that's one thing yesterday that I give nothing but praise for. Did not matter which way he was going at it. He was gonna get to that cup. He had a. Uh, I think it was either you or Ozzy. Ozzy hit a nice uh, one of the other guys in our squad. He hit a nice Euro step to back to the overside and make the layup. It was just fucked up that he misses the two <laughs> wide open layups, but makes a nice Euro step. I was just like, come on, bring fundamentals. We got some big time news to report. Oh, and yeah. It happened right before we started recording the show. And that's that Jim Harbaugh is now the coach for the Los Angeles Chargers. This makes my heart warm. For okay, somebody that Jesus loves Justin Christ. Herbert's game, I feel like the disrespect so on really Herbert. All, all the top guys. I really Herbert. do. I really do. Oh what can God. I say? It's basically everyone except Jim I, I just want to I just want to I just want to tell you son. I just want to tell you. Well, Hurst is not an elite QB. How about oh, you stop that disrespect? Second stop the disrespect. <laughs> He's not. You, boy. But Justin Herbert, I don't know if y'all knew this, but back in 2020 I was really in tune with both fans. They say Chargers fans don't have fans. They do got fans. And they was very in tune, and I was a big Justin Herbert supporter. I thought Brandon Staley was going to be a better coach. As soon as I saw him hire Joe Lombardi, I said, oh, yeah, this is going to be a disaster because Joe Lombardi wasn't a good OC in his previous stops. The way Jim Harbaugh can build up a team, the way he built up the Niners, three NFC Championship games, one Super Bowl appearance, and three seasons. The way he built up Drew's favorite college football program, Michigan, got a championship, and then said goodbye. He said, I just won a championship, and now I'm off to the NFL. He's supposed to get a couple over there. He's a legend, but you're right. He should have got a couple last year. Rumor has it Jim Harbaugh's favorite quarterback right now is Justin Herbert. So it's no surprise that he picked the Chargers to go and coach Justin Herbert is an elite quarterback talent. We talk about the elite quarterbacks in the league. You know I'm the biggest fan of Joe Burrow, and the 2020 quarterback class will always be aligned with one another. Justin Herbert is a more talented quarterback than Joe Burrow, and if he can get maximized and he can get in the right situation, Justin Herbert can win at that high of a level, and I think Jim Harbaugh gives the Chargers the best chance to do that. This was A-plus higher, and it's unbelievable. I'm looking forward to to seeing how the charges are. I'm glad you see the light on that because I've been saying that for years. I think Herbert is top two, top off, three man. most talented in the league. Uh, I say I fell off minimally. I just feel like people associate me too much with the Chargers and Herbert. And I no, feel so like you I fell need over to your Herbert love. Man. Uh, you took Hurts over him. He did. Hey, I'm fine with that. This that's season, inex- there was this season. He fell, he fell Hurts was better. Yeah. This season, Hurts was better. He finished with the 89 passer rating. Hurts, really? You're gonna yes. do that? You're gonna do that? that was, those last rating. six weeks are so nasty, man. They, they were. were so nasty. You look at the they first eleven, from top to bottom. The first, the first eleven weeks, when Fire. I said that statement, 
There was very few better than him. Very few. But again, I still have been very consistent that Herbert is still one of the most talented in the league. And of course, this felt a little bit inevitable. It was either Belichick or Harbo. You mentioned how Harbo has spoken very, very nicely on Herbert's name. And you know that offense is going to be electric next season. I anticipate fully that the staff of guys that they're going to hire is going to be conducive to put the best product possible out for the Chargers. The Chargers needed a power move. And with the history of coaches that they've had, this was this is that hire that you look at. This is the one that's going to turn the page for, for the Los Angeles Chargers. Similar to how he did with the San Francisco 49ers when he came in and he turned that, that franchise on its head. So... I say this very bittersweetly. I miss him dearly in, in, in Michigan for what he was able to do for our program. But now that love's gone, sadly. I'll always love him for what he did for us in Michigan. <laughs> now but now you're himself. a division rival, and yeah, you hurt me. You cut me deep. You're going into to a situation where we've always known that they're a couple things away. A great coach, someone that's going to be an offensive mind that can help Herbert. You got both of those things in Jim Harbo. And two, of course, the defensive mind, which they thought that they had in Brandon Staley. That obviously wasn't it. But I, I have full confidence that Harbaugh is going to be able to bring in a defensive coordinator that's going to get that unit together. So I, 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 I'm going to have to live with this because now where this, this coach, this group of coaches is one of the best coaches in any division, talking about the AFC West, of course, with Sean Payton, Andy Reid, I respect Antonio Pierce, and now Jim Harbaugh. This is going to be... the worst coaching division. Again, you, you said He's that. Than Antonio said that on, he is better I don't know. I like Antonio. Yeah. Hey, this time next year, we have a different conversation. We'll see what happens we with the Broncos, be. man. <laughs> we'll see what we do at quarterback. But right now, I don't feel great. We were we got Raiders, better from Raiders last year. To figure it out we got better from last year. One year with him, he, he already improved our, our squad and our situation, I should say, even though it was pretty ugly. But credit to what the you, Chargers. What are you doing? Shout out to, to Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> what are you doing? And, uh, you're trying to look up old He's, he's looking up some old clips. Oh he's going to find me like, I told you guys back in 2019. No, what he's looking for, what he should be looking for, is that first video that blew up for Piggy Side. The Chargers with one. The Chargers, Joe Burrow versus Justin was Herbert. Was that you and John? And no, that was Jack. him and Jack. And, Jack. Yeah. and he took Herbert. I think they both took Herbert. That's ironic. Uh, but it, it is super <laughs> ironic because then he went full 180. Which is why I've brought up that video to him multiple times. I'm like, so what happened in that time period? Look, you know he's laughing. No, I'm laughing at this at this title. It's uh, the title is the Chargers let down Justin Herbert again. <laughs> that was back in uh, that was three years ago, and that's yeah, all. They, that's all they've done. That's all they've done. That's all, they, the defense has consistently let him down. Where he puts up points, the defense lets him up. Immediately, people are saying I'm saying his name wrong. How am I? How am I mispronouncing? Hey, listen, brother, I Arbo. pronounce a lot of shit wrong. So you know. <laughs> hey, now nah, you're, listen. You're not wrong. I definitely took Burrow over Herbert. And I, I would still take Burrow over Herbert. But in terms of the talent between the two, it was never in question for me. Like Herbert is more talented. Yeah, Joe Burrow. It credit to him because he's been fuck, a top man? three, top five quarterback. True? But I don't think he's a top three no talent. Comment. Like I think where Burrow has thrived is he's maximized what he can do physically. He can make. 90% of all throws, Herbert can make 100. That's the difference between the two. Yeah, like, I don't think he has his arm strength nowhere near where no. Justin Herbert is, off-platform, those type of throws. This is funny. Um, This is a video back when I was like, I think Justin Herbert was a rookie, and he had a bad game against the Patriots. The title was, Justin Herbert had his worst game against the Patriots. Why it wasn't that bad. <laughs> 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 Why it wasn't that bad. Uh, VBS is going to love that one. I saw VBS was back. Is he so back? He just, just, just no. Wait, hey. it was one thing about Josh Allen. Yeah, I was of course. Like, this is your first it's tweet back. Never, never in question. He's, oh yeah, he said Josh Allen never won a Super Bowl. Yeah, and I don't know if he tweeted anything since then. But honestly, though, we always have been high on the Chargers. I think they always just disappoint us. I think we every year we, do, we yeah. have them making the playoffs for yeah. some wild reason. And yeah. they don't. I had the Chargers as the first seed for the 2022 NFL season in the preseason. They're always talented. Yeah. Over the Chiefs? Yeah. I'm glad you said I that. I had them winning always, the division, too. They're always too. talented, but the coaching wasn't there. The injuries always piled up, and then players just underperformed. Um, A-plus higher. You know, there, there's not much here. Jim Harbaugh was probably the top one, if not top two candidates in this coaching cycle. He's been flirting with the NFL for years we know what he did with the 49ers. The fact that the first year he took over, the Niners go from six wins to 11 wins. The offense and defense do a complete 180 and turn from one of the worst units in the NFL to one of the best units in the NFL. Um, I love this for the Chargers. You know, they needed to go out there 
and not just get a head coach that's going to maximize, maximize Justin Herbert, but they need someone to build a culture there. It feels like forever. It feels like maybe never in my lifetime that they had a legitimate culture. Maybe go back to like Phillip Rivers, LT days. But since then, this last decade or so, it doesn't really feel like they've had a culture of winning or someone that's been a stabilizer at head coach who could consistently win. And that's what Jim is going to be able to bring to this team. Going from the 49ers, then to Michigan, ending his career there with the Natty. It's what I think he wanted to do with San Francisco. Unfortunately, he fell a little bit short. And I think the the biggest positive out of all of this outside of just helping the Chargers is this team is going to be able to build through the draft, right? I think I mentioned this probably a couple of, uh, weeks ago when we were talking about Jim Harbaugh and when we said when Pete Carroll first got to Seattle, how did they get these guys like Richard Sherman in the middle of the draft and, and guys like that? Jim Harbaugh is going to be able to do very similar stuff. Is he going to get a Hall of Famer? You know, on day two, day three, who knows? But he's going to be able to get high-impact players immediately. And the Chargers having a franchise quarterback, I don't think they're that far away. You know, Mm -hmm. I I think a lot of people are saying, you know, you got to give it a year or two. Um, It's too much to expect them year one to be able to, to completely turn around this team. But I think there's talent on this Chargers roster. It's just going to be about one, maximizing it, and two, being able to stay healthy. This team has been destroyed by injuries, what feels like every single season. This year, of course, Justin Herbert missed a, a good portion of the season. If they're able to stay healthy, I think Harbo is going to be able to really uplift this team. The ceiling all of a sudden becomes like a Super Bowl type ceiling, maybe not this season, but just in general, having an A plus coach is going to give you that type of ceiling. It's hard not to look at this move and really nitpick it or find anything negative about it. I think the only thing that you can maybe nitpick is at the end of the 49ers tenure, a lot of players kind of got sick of his message and kind of got sick of like whether it was the same stories he was telling, whether it was just the same things he was kind of beating on day after day. Players got sick of it. That was one of the reasons he ended up leaving San Francisco. But that's really the only negative thing that you could even say about that. And even still, he had a very nice run of San Francisco, winning a lot, making it to NFC Championship games, making it to a Super Bowl. So, you know, he could he's going to come in and be one of the best coaches in the NFL. You look at the Baltimore Ravens, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, you look at the San Francisco 49ers. What's been pretty consistent with those guys? An elite head coach, you know, Andy Reid, John, his, his twin brother, you know, and Kyle Shanahan. So I, I think, you know, it's easy. You know, it's a different story when, like, you have a coach coming in and you're drafting a guy as opposed to a coach coming in, a veteran coach, a guy who's been on the NFL scene, who's been in the college scene. He's won at a high level at both. He may not have won the Super Bowl in the NFL, but he's won at a high level in the in the NFL. Comes in and he already has a guy who's top five in his position. You know, a guy who still has yet to reach his peak, a guy who still can get better. So I think it's interesting that, and you mentioned it, I think the draft is the most important part for this team because they do have talent, but it's either old and they're injured. You know, Khalil Mack, he's getting up there in age. Bosa's injured a lot. Keenan Allen's also up there in age. Mike is coming off an injury. And, you know, they did draft Quentin, but he had a, probably one of the worst wide receiver rookie years in NFL history. So, and, and Austin Eckler, will he be back? You know, he's a guy reaching up there in that running back age. So his team is either old or they're dealing with injuries. So hitting on the draft is probably going to be the most important part. But Jim, is a he's a he's a culture builder. He's a, a team builder. He built up the Michigan program, which should have, like we talked about before, they should have won multiple championships, but they finally got that big one. And I think he was always waiting to get the championship, then go back to the NFL, you know, but because I, I thought he they would have won last year and then he would have came. But, you know, obviously they lost. But oh, he came all right. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, cook. Um, But, yeah, I think him and Herbert are going to be great. And, you know, I mentioned it. Jim, he walks in, he's already the second best coach in his division. You know, you're going into a division with Baltimore where they got their top two guys in Lamar and his brother. Then you got Andy and you got Mahomes. So you need another coach that can go toe-to-toe with those other Good guys. Point. They already have the quarterback that can go toe-to-toe. And not to mention Josh Allen McDermott. McDermott is an elite, but he's still a very good coach. You got Josh Allen. So now you got a guy that can get maximized. You got a team that can now be fully maximized. And it's just about... Who Harbaugh brings into this program? Like, who's going to be the other staff? Because that's always the most important. Because we've seen even Nick Sirianni, he bring in a different staff, and they weren't good, and you saw the Eagles fall off. So it, I'm excited for the Chargers because we haven't seen them reach that level of expectation we've all wanted at the table. You know, I think we all had them making the playoffs probably three years in a row just because of how much talent they have on that roster, and they just failed to reach that expectation. So I think Jim is going to get the best out of these guys. They have yeah. seven draft picks. Sorry, does yeah. they have seven draft picks? I think what's intriguing about where they're drafting is that they're drafting at the fifth spot of each round. 
which is going to make for a lot of trade down opportunities to acquire even more draft picks. Yeah. And I think that can build up their team pretty fast as well if they, they go could, they with could, that approach. They could stick and pick at five, right? They could get another weapon. Um, you know, they could go a bunch of different routes, but they could also acquire more I draft picks. I think they have to get another weapon. AZ is four, correct? Yeah. Because number three is the Patriots. Patriots. Yeah. There's a chance a league neighbors five. that one, two, three are all quarterbacks. There's a possibility. Who would be the third quarterback? Jaden Daniels going Jayden. that high. I don't know oh. why he's getting mocked that high. I'll there is, honest. but that is... A lot of mocks. A lot of Max have him going re- uh, really high. Ma- Max. Max have him and going So really Mar- high. I think I Marvin's like going to Arizona. Marvin, I don't see a possibility that the Chargers for. could get Marvin. Arizona's not But Malik him. is a strong possibility, and Brock is a strong possibility. Mm-hmm. You get you get Herbert another strong weapon. Bowers is going to be one of the best tight ends off rip. I firmly believe that. Mm-hmm. But they need weapons like you see, yes. like they have Keenan and Mike Williams, but Mike coming off the injury, they're both I want to say free agents at the end of next season. And beyond that, we can't trust Quentin Johnson no. to take over, and then no you way. have really nothing there. I was looking just on Pro Football Reference before Harbo took over for the 49ers. It was eight straight losing seasons where they're, you know, third place, fourth place, fourth place, third place. He comes in. They win 13 games. They had eight straight years outside of one year where the fourth ranked defense under uh, Singletary. They had four straight years. They were never ranked in the top 20 of defense. Harbo comes in second ranked defense, second ranked defense, third ranked defense his first three seasons. So he's able to take over an organization. They're not a losing organization historically. Obviously, they have all the Super Bowls. But at that time in the early 2000s, they were a losing organization. They had he came in though. and you know took over and completely turned around. The Alden franchise. Smith, Justin Was Smith, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick that Willis, team? Willis yeah. he retired Bowman. Too. That That's team was Frank Gore. crazy. Frank Gore, oh, Frank was Gore for sure. Alden Smith was Crowd nice. Yeah. Alden Smith was oh, disgusting. Nice. Alden Smith just. Wasn't dedicated to the grind. I feel like didn't he get into some trouble? He did get into some trouble. Patrick Willis retired early. He did yeah. retire early. He Him and Navarro old. Bowman. Older, I mean, yeah. what? Yeah, they had some dogs. And Justin Smith, yo, he was dirty. He was good. Damn. This was an out of the box hire for the Chargers. Their last four coaches have been Brandon Staley, Anthony Lynn, Mike McCoy, North Turner. All guys that when they got the job were assistants and then ended up getting the job. I think the Chargers need needed to make this move, understanding that Herbert's one of the best players in the league, and we have to get in a guy that's proven to, to coach. We can't bank on another assistant. I love Ben Johnson as much as an next person, but this was the move. All this, this was, was suspended move. four straight seasons, yeah. 2016, yep. 17, 18, and I think 19. it was for marijuana, if I'm not mistaken. Was it? Mm-hmm. It was a Flash Gordon shit. I think that's what it was. A legend. Never the Maybe same. I'm wrong. Really, legend. Bro came legend. into the league, 14 sacks, 19.5 sacks. I'm going to make him in Madden, Alan it. Smith. 8.5, okay. 2, fun. 3, 4 years suspended. Is getting sacks easy on, on career mode? If you know what you're doing. Okay. What difficulty do you play on? Hall of Fame. Really? Yeah, I can never play on nothing else. I respect Even if I'm playing like, even if I'm getting cooked, I'm good. Because I'll tell you what, I cannot play 2K on Hall of Fame. I do it. If I'm, I, I will, I, I'm right now, I have a my league. I'm 21 and 8 right now. Just because AI, AI What's Hall of Fame is. Golden State. Oh. I have poor George. Well, I cheated. For what him. moves did you make? Huh? Oh, you did trade over. I cheated. For I cheated. Him. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> AI Hall of Fame defense is fucked. Yeah, no, the Hall of Fame makes is crazy because I play on uh, I play on real player because I hate the uh, the shot. Yeah, no, there's a shot the shot meter thing. What do you mean you hate that? I hate it. But that like is like part of the difficulty of the game. No, nah, if you play on try play a game on real player and watch computer make every single jump shot, even if you're well, there. What does real player mean? Just true to stats? Yes. Okay, but that's that's what I mean. That's uh, shot meter is if you have a player that has like a seventy something overall, but if you know their jump shot, you can make it. Yeah, yeah. Real players not allowing that bullshit. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. bullshit. So Steph Curry must just be. He's a he, guy. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. J King sent a super chat. Seen a lot of slander on my boy Joshy Poo this week in oh, the J. media. King. He's still top three. He will be back. P.S. When is the merch dropping? February All 3rd. signs point to February third. Like Josh say. Poo was a little crazy. <laughs> All signs kind of sounds like some shit you would say to Josh. Nah, Joshy Poo. Joshy Pookins. Step too, hmm? Step too far. Your Pookie Bear. Bit. He tries to pretend he's hard. You know, and like, he's he loves to pretend he's. I think hard Joshy Poo is just a little too crazy for me. What would you say then, Josh Allen? Give me a nickname. I just say him, Jordan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> Damian Delgado was goes, two years too early, man. What are your thoughts on all of the Miles Bridges and Nick Richards to the Suns rumors? I didn't even see that. Apparently, I he's getting rumored to go to the Suns, and Suns that. fans are not happy about it. They don't want... Who, who not, would be in the move? Nurkic? Him. 
I Grayson think it's Allen. only Nazir Little and picks. Really, no Grayson Allen. Allen? Grayson the money Allen. wouldn't work yeah. there. No Grayson Allen. I think it's Metsu, Nazir Little, and then somebody else. How much is Bridges making? Seven. Oh, okay. I mean, they have a bunch of minimum guys. But Nick is at five, so you need about twelve. Oh yeah, that might work. Okay, that might work. But Suns I mean, fans if, really why are not they, happy. Not, I would do it if it's just to give up Little and Metsu. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, the, the politics team, the about t- it. Correct. It, it's not about skill. It's not about. But it's, if y'all let him in the league, the politics are already done. I know, but the fans are, are standing on their morals. All right, I, mean. I will say from um, a perspective of, you know, you being a Phoenix chastising fan. what he did, if the Suns make the move, you know, they should definitely be criticized for making the move. But they are in a predicament right now where they're not a team that has a three-year window. They have to win now. Yep. And if they can trade Nazir Little and Metu – for Bridges Shit, and great. Nick Richards, so, yeah, it's a no-brainer. And it makes them much, Legit, much better. For sure. Much, much better. Right. Have, How has Bridges looked this picks? year? He's looked a little up and down, but as a score, he's he just got get second-round picks. Okay. They have a ton of second-round picks to trade. The Suns. Okay. Yeah. So they Charles, uh, he, they're uh, about to trade everybody. Anyways. They just yeah. traded Rosier. They're about to trade Gordon Haywood. So, fuck it, yeah. Santos goes, can y'all sign my hoodie and get John 2, please? Fuck Santos. I'm not signing a <laughs> damn thing. Respect Santos. Respect I'll Santos. sign it, Santos. Yeah, Santos. Yeah, Santos. I'm not, you're not getting you, that signed from me, brother. Well, His signature Riv is not the best anyway. He's just going to do it in, in Riv, print. Riv, who's was River. better, me or Joel's? They were both terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really the thing bad. is, you just completely botched the job. I he knew it. what the job was. It was just that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's that, worse. No, that's not worse. That is worse because I didn't know what we were doing. Honestly, after looking at it a second time, I didn't hate Ribs as much as I hated you. <laughs> Ribs was crazy. Bubble <laughs> letters. Yeah, Rib, Ribs was like he it wasn't like bubble letters. He just, like, he just wrote his name. He just wrote his name. Yours <laughs> just looked up like you just fucking just like all right. That's my name. That's my name. I gotta get used to spreading this shit quick. Facts. You ain't never seen people in Hollywood signatures. It's not. It's not always extravagant. Yeah, they look crazy usually. I had to cut that N D R E W. I just go Ava Les. I think I put Rivio for it. You did, yeah. and it looked like <laughs> R J wrote it. <laughs> hey, that's the real me, man. You want it? Get it. Angel, Angel, Angel Botello go Steelers picking up Justin Fields and going to the Super Bowl. All right, there's that. Oh jeez! Didn't we have Steelers fans saying that they were going to beat the Bills? <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> giving them a chance. Yeah. Steelers. Played better than people expected. Also, if the Steelers get Cliffs Kingsbury, I'm I'm interested. I'm very. I think interested. we got a second interview with him. That would also be lit if y'all got him too. Yeah, we need somebody, bro. I think Cliffs a good play caller. I just don't know if he's meant to be a head coach. The other coaching news that happened this week that I think is the also the most recent news is that the Bucks fired Adrian Griffin. And not only did they fire him, but then they hired Doc Rivers to coach this team. I want to get your guys' thoughts. You know, what do you think this does for the Bucks? I think it makes them at least a little bit better with Doc Rivers. I think it does make them. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> is Doc Rivers not a better coach than Adrian Griffin? He's been waiting on Doc Rivers' comeback. Yeah, that's, that's why I laugh. That's really why I laugh. Yo, I forgot been about that on the Doc Rivers right versus now. Nick Nurse shit. Then that I can really about that. That might be the right conference now. finals now. Yeah, yeah. Oh I'm my like, god! No, he's what? <laughs> Yo, what? Was, he's really a hater, bro. <laughs> shit, don't move, man. Nah, Doc is a definitely one hundred. Let me let me get let me get this off my chest. You it, took Adrian Griffin over Missoula, right? No. That was Honestly, the one I did. That, it. I wouldn't be surprised. I just put no, words no. in his mouth. I'm being honest. Yeah, I don't yeah know no, that was the one I definitely <laughs> didn't do. No, Adrian Griffin is one of the worst coaches ever in history. He has, I think, like a top four winning percentage and got like only David Blatt out of most recently was fired this quickly. Um, he wasn't good. Doc Rivers clears him 100%. There's no doubt in my mind. Like, he's not good, but he's an insane upgrade over Adrian Griffin. You could just see all year the players didn't respect him, the players didn't follow through with his play. You know, Damian Lillard did not look comfortable in his offensive scheme and I'll be honest I think giving up 130 to the Pistons back to back like twice was with, with no Cade was, yep. the, was the one we're like alright buddy I know and we're not good defensively <laughs> yeah, like, we're, <laughs> we're not good defensively but we're this, five, is, a, this is a little offense. fucking nuts and I think you know at some point you look at this roster it's not good defensively but you got to get something out of this group you know at, at, like you got to get something the rotations was a little weird you know, and they just, the players in the locker room, they kept complaining about him all year. They didn't respect Adrian Griffin. And it was kind of like, you got Giannis for, I think, a two-year window. 
You know, you got Dame for not however many years you got. You want to maximize. Same thing with the Suns. You want to maximize what you can from this roster. Brooke Lopez is really up there in age. Chris Middleton is probably going to be hard to move, so he's probably going to be on this roster. So you want to maximize what you can from this roster. And Adrian Griffin, they realized pretty early, you know, he's not going to be in. Sometimes you don't need a year or a playoff run to, you know, fully fire a coach. You can fire him when you need to. Sometimes, you know, the history doesn't matter either. You know, that this little jab to somebody else. But other than that, you know, Doc Rivers is here. So, <laughs> You know, I was actually looking at some of the numbers and the lineup of Damian Lillard, uh, Malik Beasley, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Brooke Lopez. Their defensive rating when they're on the floor, which is over 900 possessions, is 110, which would be good enough to be second in the league. But, of course, that only accumulates a certain number of, of total possessions when you've had over 4,000. But that lineup in itself is solid defensively. Now, doing a little bit of homework, and what Adrian was trying to do that was terrible was that he he really was too honed in on offensive rebounding when offensive rebounding is not a strength of theirs regardless. They're one of the worst rebounding teams in general. And so they're getting burned in transition. So teams are just able to get out there and run and just get easy buckets on the bucket, on, on excuse me on the Milwaukee Bucks. I think that this is a boost regardless. Yes, uh, Doc Rivers, how I feel about him or not, is a better head coach. (laughs) Doc Rivers just gave you a reason to fear the deer. No. Oh, God. (laughs) Fear the deer, fear the beard. I mean, you're really, you're on those lines, and I respect that. But I think that he can obviously do a better job in that regard. I feel like finding defensive... Finding an answer defensively will be much easier for Doc as opposed to Adrian Griffin. Now, we understand the roster construction is not meant of that for for this defense to be great. But again, like I mentioned, with Damian Lillard in the lineup, they have a lineup that they play good defense. It's just when they start to get into their rotations, that's when things start to fall apart. And as a team, as a whole, they're not a great rebounding team. Maybe that's something that they do address in this off, in in the trade deadline. But another thing is the way that Adrian Griffin was using Bobby Portis, where he would play a lot more drop before with Bud, but then with Adrian Griffin, he has he's blitzing a little bit more. And early in the season, it was playing dividends, but now we're starting to see Bobby Portis kind of get, get abused in that regard. So now... If, if they can just get back to crashing the defensive glass, forget about offense, get back in transition after you miss a shot, because we know offensively they've been one of the best offenses in the league. If I'm not mistaken, they're still the second best in terms of offensive rating. So if we look at where they're going wrong right now, there's things in place for Doc to come in, put his philosophies in there, and just clean up the little things, where we already see the Bucks as one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, but that's while being one of the worst defenses on top of it. So I think bringing in Doc obviously gives them a boost, but I, I tweeted this, and I still firmly feel this, is how am I supposed to feel confident in the Milwaukee Bucks in a playoff series with Doc Rivers as their head coach? I love the team. I love Damian Lillard. I love Giannis. Brooke Lopez as a defensive anchor down low. Chris Middleton as now your third option. You see the, the, the way that Malik Beasley has been hitting shots this season. This is a great offensive lineup. But when now Doc in a playoff setting, I find myself at, at, at a being a little bit reluctant on, on buying into the Milwaukee Bucks. Now it's unfortunate because they have a firm roster. And I think that they can clean things up in the regular season that can make you feel confident. But I'm going to take a week. Maybe two weeks of fully watching the Milwaukee Bucks under Doc Rivers, see the changes that he makes, and then I'll make my playoff evaluation. But just going off history and the squads that he's had in the past, I can't feel confident. Yeah, I'm looking at Doc Rivers. He he felt like when this happened, it felt like Doc is a floor raiser move, not as yeah. much as a ceiling raiser. I'm with you there. And I'm yeah, just looking at his, his career win-loss. He hasn't had a losing season Oh, my God. Since the Magic days, I want to say. Or maybe early Celtics days, 2006. (laughs) Looks like the last time he had a losing season. So then why was it that you were on Whistle talking about how they'll never, they're not going to win a championship? Because they don't have defensive personnel still. But but Doc Rivers is a mover. They're a bottom 10 defense in the half court. I know. They're terrible. Defense is bad. I thought the reaction to Griffin getting fired was pretty hilarious because <laughs> all season long, everyone's like, Adrian Griffin sucks. This defense is terrible. Questioning his decision making. And then he gets fired. And was like, whoa, they're the two seed. They have the second best record in the NBA. They're Magic 30 Johnson even tweeted. It was funny to see the reaction. I'm like, we've been shitting on this guy for three months. He gets fired yeah. and everyone's looking at it like, this is such a crazy move. Um, but I think it was the right move. I think 
what the Bucks told you was it's process over results here, right? Because you're sitting at 30 and 13. You're second in the East, second best uh, record in total, I want to say. That's a fraudulent record, too. I don't think they beat many good teams. I, they didn't. No, they. I want to say they had around the 28th uh, or, yes, second easiest schedule. Like, their strength schedule was, like, 28th. And if you look at some of these games they've been in, it's it's hilarious. First of all, 21st in defensive rating. In January, January they're 28th in defensive rating. They've been <laughs> god-awful. Like Terrible in the, in the month Pistons of January. Pistons level, Wizards level. So they've allowed less than 100 points just once to the Hornets. They allowed 99 points. They've allowed less than 110 points just five times. For reference, the Blazers have held two teams under 100, and they've held 11 teams to under 110 points. And some of their recent games are the worst. They have two wins against the Pistons, which we mentioned. One of them, they allowed 135 points. Uh, win in overtime against the Kings, 142 points. Beat the Warriors without Steph. They clapped the Celtics. Um, lost to the Jazz, allowed 132 that points. One, huh? They clapped. They beat what, nobody what, what, good. What do you want me to they say? They, they, they beat them so bad. <laughs> and they sat the starters in the second half. <laughs> and they took them off the TV. Yeah. That was the fourth game in five nights for them, though. It was. And yeah, this, this was the three young days players. rest. Um, but didn't the, Bucks, man, I, I, didn't the Celtics I'm, just I'm do biased. that against... They just, yeah, just beat somebody off. That's what I'm blanking on. Who was the it? The Mavs last night. Yeah. The Mavs were on three days rest, four yep. days rest. Because, um, yeah, they had the game yep. against the yep. Warriors that got postponed. Um, they lost the Rockets. They had a hell game against the Spurs. Yeah, they they barely won that game. Back-to-back -back L's against them. the Pacers are letting up 140, 120 points. It goes on and on. But if I'm a Bucks fan, I'm happy. You know, I think Adrian Griffin, very early on, even though that they were winning, you could tell it wasn't because of Adrian Griffin. It's because you got fucking Giannis and Dame out there. You're going to beat a lot of teams in the regular season, at least, because you're just going to have better players. Like, there's maybe one or two players in the world better than Giannis on any given night. It's Jokic and probably Embiid this season. But outside of that... Every other matchup, the 28 other teams you're going to have, or 27, Whether you're going to have the best God. player. Um, or Luka. Yeah, regardless. And Embiid's the best player in the league right now. Embiid and Jokic, I think, right now, you could say over, over Giannis. Funny. I'm not trying to get into that conversation. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if I'm the Bucks, I think you could look at Skim this God. and say, Can you calm down? <laughs> Doc Rivers maybe doesn't, I don't feel the most comfortable going to the playoff setting with all the blown leads. He's had the 3-1 blown leads, the game sevens, the lack of adjustments. You look at that game seven against Boston last oh, yeah. year where Tatum goes for fucking 100, and he's really not making a lot of adjustments to stop the pull-up three. Um, could Phil Jackson have stopped Jason Tatum that night? Not, No one on earth could have stopped him that night. But even still, try something, right? So I think that's just the biggest question with Doc, <laughs> is that in the playoffs, Andrew Wiggins could game stop. to game adjustments, oh. playoff <laughs> series adjustments, Andre Jackson, uh, that's, that's definitely going to be a question. But Adrian Griffin was going to do that regardless. And at least Doc gives you a much higher floor than Griffin does. Um, so going into the playoffs, I don't know if I'm going to have the Bucks taking them over the Celtics. going to be tough. There's a lot of good teams in the East. We see how good the Knicks are. We see how good the 76ers are. The Cavs are on fire. So coming into the year, it felt like it was Boston, Milwaukee, Bit of a gap than everybody else, but I don't. I feel like more so that Milwaukee is in that second tier and Boston's in the I, tier. By I himself. didn't think it was a gap between them and Philly. I really, I really didn't believe that. I Bucks thought, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I really feel like they matched up well with the Bucks. I know? thought there was a gap because of Philly's playoffs. Yeah, yeah, they, no, they're they're they're, uh, they're they're blunders are nasty for for sure. Um, I it's what do you, what do you guys think about Giannis not wanting Nick Nurse? I I just am I supposed to believe it? That's a big storyline. It's 100% fact. From what's been reported. We can only go on what's been it reported. Is. Sounds like fake news. It seems to me that the front office, they wanted Nick Nurse. Why would, what's Giannis's purpose to not want him? Because Nurse like built a wall against him and humiliated him in the playoff series. Or so maybe he, he, does, he doesn't like the scheme. I'm just going to go with that one. I don't think he likes uh, Nick Nurse's offensive scheme. I don't know. So bring in Adrian Griffin? I don't mind. I, I don't mind I don't, a guy I don't find this. I mean, like, he's new. I, he's, he's something new. He is. He well, who new. reported? I think it was the Stein line, if I'm not mistaken. It's a pretty credible reporter. Um, there's a possibility this was true. It, it's hard to believe, but um, the front office does not sign Adrian Griffin if Giannis doesn't stamp it. So Giannis definitely, and, in the first and place, had to say Griffin is my if, guy. If Giannis is like the same one. Yeah, yeah. He got Drew Holiday traded. Giannis just did in the offseason. For Dame. That's it's, fine. It's for Dame. I, I get it. It's a solid move. Giannis ain't have no conversation with Drew about it. Yeah, that was crazy. He, he just went to the front that office and said, crazy. yo, I, he got to go. No loyalty. Go. Go. No, no. I don't know if he said he got to go, but I said, get, he probably said, get me Dame. Well, no, he said, be, he said the day before Drew got traded or like maybe same day earlier, but he was like, "That's my, Drew's my brother. I want him as a buck for life. 
And then of Drew said the same shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Giannis' he, ideal he, situation is got Drew and Dave. You know what it is, though? You ain't got to go up there and say all that. You could just say nothing like, nah, I don't want to talk today. Or instead of just going up there, nah, that's my no, brother. But then he ain't going I think nowhere. you make more headlines if you do that. In this case, Giannis could just be like, well, I didn't know. He could just be like, I was ignorant. I didn't know what was happening. But that's, then that's, my that's dog. Cap. the front office. That's the front he knows. office thing. You don't think that he there does, was a way, there was no other way that. The Bucks could have gotten Drew and Dame on the team together. No, no. They really money have. wise, probably they had worked. a trade. Maybe Drew. Chris, because Middleton probably wouldn't have worked because he just signed. Correct. Let me ask you something so. though. It, um, they also why does Drew it got more picks? They weren't able to do that for Middleton. True. Not at least the picks they got. I know what you mean. Why does it benefit the Bucks if they didn't want Nick Nurse? Like, why wouldn't Giannis want Nick Nurse? I agree. That's, That's the question you're asking. But if he wanted Nick Nurse, they could have got Nick Nurse. Then they would have got Nick Nurse. The front office would have gotten Nick Nurse. Like, I think they were tied to the decision that Giannis won. But Philly, didn't Nick Nurse sign with Philly before the Bucks brought in Adrian Griffin? I could be mistaken on he my timeline. He withdrew his name. He withdrew his name from the Bucks uh, coaching race. That sounds familiar. That's when... That's where I'm kind of something must have happened under the water. Having difficulty, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see that he beat Giannis 2019 because he beat Philly too. I don't think that why that would stop Giannis. Yeah, I don't. He he beat both those teams. I'm Giannis. I want the best coach. I don't care. He actually beat both of them in the same exact run in 2019. So I don't see the oh oh yeah. I think it's something. I don't know. That's weird though. I doubt that the front office was like we just don't want Nick Nurse because if they fired Adrian Griffin mid mid midway through the season, then. They obviously want what's best for the team. Did you see how fast they signed Doc Rivers? Yeah. yeah. What's Less crazy than is he hours. was a consultant for the for for month, this team. So, he yeah. was basically mm-hmm. just under the covers. He's like, I'm coming, Adrian. No one's going to see it. But he, he tweeted right this out. It's a fact. Doc Rivers going to keep a job. He's 100% <laughs> right. He's going to keep a job. Well He's said, a great P. coach. How about you respect He's Doc? I, and how about you respect him for bringing a championship no, to the Celtics? That's the last time y'all won a championship. I don't think any Celtics fans gives a fuck about that no, championship. I love, I love Doc. That's what they're holding on to for I, dear fucking life. I love life. Doc. I'll be honest. They don't. I, they, they talk. Listen, I haven't heard a Celtics fan talk about that 08 ring. And so well, they so don't it's care because about, now there's expectations like three to win hours again. ago. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they don't care about that shit, bro. But but since then, Doc has not shown to be able to get back there. I think that's the issue people are having is that he's had talented teams with the Clippers. He's had talented teams with the 76ers. They, he's gotten close, but he's never able to close it out and get to the back to the finals. I think that's a fair point. You brought up the game seven from Tatum. I think Doc threw adjustments and Tatum was just on one. That's what I'm saying. Doc threw the kitchen sink at him. I don't know. I feel he like threw a so lot many different coverages and defenders. He was trying to stop Tatum. Nothing nobody stepped happened. up to the plate. I feel like there's big a lot of times defenders, Tatum was able like. just to get open looks off pick and roll. I feel like Doc gets a little bit too criticized for his past because I think with the Clippers, the first we stint, know you feel this way. with Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, they were always hurt. The second stint with the Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George, well, he was always the coach there, but when he got <laughs> Kawhi and Paul George, <laughs> Paul George choked and Kawhi choked in game seven. Insane, okay. Not disagreeing so far. You don't think Paul George choked? It's just In rude to say. It's just rude to say. But yes, I do think that he didn't play up to his standard. Kawhi didn't play up to his standard in game seven. He blew it. Agreed. They blew a 3-1 lead. I think, you know, of course, some of that goes on a coach. I think some of that goes on the players. They got to just be there but, in big but you, time moments. But you also know what it is. He's blown multiple 3-1s. I understand that. That one was like you could all make the, of them. You that was the sometimes same it's just Philly. bad luck. You can sometimes make the same argument with Philly where Embiid was not showing up in these playoff games. Exactly. James, that's what I'm saying. James Harden last yeah. season was not showing up. So, I mean, if, if that's the argument you want to make, that's the argument if you're a Bucks fan, you got to tell yourself. The so most you're in on the Bucks. It makes them more respectable. I now see them as a team. Okay. Okay. Y'all could do something in the playoffs. <laughs> okay. Before, it, before with Adrian Griffin, he was a joke. He was a laughing stock. They was not going to do nothing with Adrian Griffin. So I think this makes them better. Giannis has been throwing shots at Griffin all year long. And I feel like they've been wanting to get him fired for, for a while. But let's just be clear. Griffin was a terrible coach. He was trying to instill this Raptors physical defense on the Bucks without having the players and Correct. The personnel. Correct. Dame never bought in in the offensive scheme. Giannis and Dame, that duo, they don't run pick and rolls as frequent as you want them to. For two top, run that two, top two offense players. They don't do no handoff actions as much as they should. At least with Doc Rivers, I can count on him maximizing them both offensively. Because with Adrian Griffin, they had the second best offensive rating and they weren't playing how they should play to be maximized as players. They were being held back and they're the second best offense in the league. If Doc Rivers hones in on one side of the ball, they're never going to be a top end defense with the personnel but if they can at least get to a respectable level and get stops, I think now this is a team that's more serious. And I think Doc Rivers at least gives them an identity to do that. But don't you think there's that. still a personnel gap here where 
we could say we want them to have a great defense, but they still, at least on the perimeter, don't have the dudes to stop guys. Like that backcourt of Malik Beasley and Dame, that's one of the worst backcourts defensively in the NBA, right? So on the at the rim, Brooke Lopez, Giannis, you got that. But is Doc Rivers going to be able to turn Damian Lillard into a good defender? Malik old, Beasley man. into a good defender? You know, no. it's tough. You just got to hope, really, that once playoff comes around, that there's more energy there, there's more like effort there. for a seven Yeah, because um, regular season hasn't been there. The Bucks lost to the Rockets last week, 122-116. to 116, And Giannis, in a post-game press conference, said, defensively, we have to have a plan. Yeah. What is our strategy? Are we going to give up a lot of open threes? Are we going to let them get in the paint? When they go in the post, are we going to stay with ours and play one-on-one? What is our strategy? Right now, we are giving everything. With Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks gave up a lot of threes. They mm-hmm. let a lot of teams was, shoot a lot of threes. That was their defensive yeah. identity. Their yeah. defensive like, identity cool, was, the threes. we're going to be a great team at protecting the paint. And that's why versus the Heat, you know, they got torts on the perimeter. Oh, yeah. Doc Rivers has to choose something with this team because this is not going to be a team that's going to be a man-to-man team where he's just going to line up and just be better. They have to be a zone-heavy team because of their personnel. And Doc has to at least instill something in that. But I just look at the offense now that it could be maximized. Now that you can run more pick and rolls with Giannis and Dame, I think if you spam that, you're fine. You don't need to do too much. And the offense will be the reason why they win a championship. But that's what they traded off when they traded Drew for Dame regardless. That's the, a fact. the worry about spamming is that you just don't want your offense to get too stagnant. I know with Dame and, and Giannis, it should be that simple to a degree, but... They obviously have something going right now, but I just, I do, I'm with you. And still a little bit more pick and roll, get them going, get them incorporated in the offense. More importantly, get Dame more comfortable in this offense because Dame is the key. That's always been the key coming into the season of when you get late in games, who's going to be the one to step up? It should be Dame. You want him to get him, get back in that efficiency bag of his where we haven't really seen him play to that standard of late. It's his first time being in a situation where he is a number two. So, well, aside from early on in his career, but he's he hasn't had that situation in a long time, and we understand Giannis is the best player on this team. So finding his moments of 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 when to attack, when to get to the basket, when to, to, to take a shot, but getting comfortable within the offense, I feel like that's going to be the key for this offense. We for don't sure. have uh, the contract details for Doc, right? I, I, was, I just looked quick. I couldn't find it because mm-hmm. Milwaukee's basically saying this is going to be our guy. Right, of course you're not going to be firing him midway through this season again and going into next year. So, I don't know. It's tough because on one hand you have to maximize your window with Damon Giannis. You don't have this five year window to win a championship. But on the other hand, are you gonna if this happens again next season? Are you gonna fire Doc now because you didn't on have it depends on the market. But you didn't have the opportunity because of course in yeah. January the best candidates aren't available. It's January they are they have positions, assistants, or head coaches somewhere else. So you don't have this hey, pool of options. Was open, man. Who? McMillan was there. Nate McMillan? That would have moved you? <laughs> <laughs> Stan Van Gundy? <laughs> no. Or no. Jeff, would they want? Look, look, they, 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 I don't know how many guys are going to be there in the offseason this year either, so I think they're probably going to be stuck for Doc for some time. Two former Celtics were on the move. Doc Rivers joining the uh, the Bucks, and then Terry Rozier so confused you joining the Miami this. Heat. The Miami Heat are making a fan out of me, man. Oh, my God. How many Hawkins? My Central American brother. He said. Uh-huh. And now Terry Rozier. I mean, have I, I not been talking to y'all about Terry Rozier? You have for two weeks. Terry Rozier is the perfect Miami Heat player. I think this was a great trade. I mean, he's having the best season of his career. This year, he's shooting 53.3% inside the arc. His field goal percentage in the paint is 55%, and his mid range is at 48%. Those are career highs. 39% pull-up shooter, fifth best amongst 28 players on 100 attempts. One of the best pull-up three-point shooters in the league. Mm. 48.2% from pull-up mm. to 12th out of 52 players on 100 attempts. And this is the most impressive stat of them all. He's yielding a 1.11 points per possession on 7.6 pick and roll and ball handle opportunities this season. That's pretty good. Which is the second best mark in the league, only behind Tyrese Halliburton. The Heat are def- are an offense that is in the 20s in terms of offensive rating. They need an injection of scoring and playmaking. Tara Rozier does that. They embrace this underdog mentality. We're not supposed to be here, but we're going to beat you anyway. And I think that represents Tara Rozier. I feel like that's gone. You think that's that gone? That underdog mentality is gone. I don't you think it went, is. You went to two finals with this 
duo of Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. Let's the, throw trio because of Spo. I think the um, perception is gone, but I think the the mentality will always be there for them. Agreed. That's, how, that's, that's how fair. They built their culture. It's that's because facts. we're looking at the Celtics. We understand that this is just a juggernaut of a squad. Damon and and Giannis are together. And beat is could beat on Bucks. his way to another uh, MVP. It seems like, yeah. But you just can't disrespect. They could beat, they could beat Philly in the Bucks. They could beat anyone. They legitimately they can shouldn't beat, beat the Celtics. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Uh, you know. But like, I'm just going off what his. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, that's they just what I'm have saying. players with the mentality. How many Hawk has passed up on sure. uh-huh. more than ten teams? And then he's, you know, a top four rookie right now. Very good statement because Jimmy Butler in his own right, the Sixers yeah. didn't want to extend the contract to him. Fair enough. They all have that type of mentality, and I think Rozier fits that. It's been a while since we've seen him in a playoff setting, and when he was in a playoff setting, he was amazing for the Celtics. I miss him every This time. is a— uh, When he got, yeah, we got blocked by LeBron. He did go, like, 0 for he got 10 foul. game 7 or whatever. No. That was a foul. No, he did not. Look at that playoff right now. Like, look at it I've up. seen it multiple that was a foul. times. He smacked his hand. He didn't hit no, the ball. No, he didn't. Look it up. That game right. seven was so I'll nice happily, for my own pleasure, I'll, I'll happily. I need, I need to see what they it They should have made the finals, man. They should have made the finals. <laughs> <laughs> Choking a 3-2 lead. Terry Rozier is an interesting player. The 19-year-old Jason Very interesting Tatum, player. Man. I'm glad that you're a fan, though. Not playing with LaMelo this year, his numbers increased, you yep. know, because LaMelo didn't miss a, a shit ton of time, you know. And he showed his worth and got dealt. And I, I think the deal in itself, you know, Miami lottery protected 2027 20, and basically Kyle Lowry, you know. So, you know, essentially nothing and something because if Miami does get that lottery pick, they get that pick in 2028 20, unprotected. So that's, that's cool. Over 10 from three, game seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He was over 10? Over 10 from three. Terry was here? Game Sounds seven like Trevor the Ariza. Active. Now, the funny shit about this is LeBron blocked him. He does not get back on offense. He's just standing on the defensive side, just mean mugging. That was a foul. I'm looking, I'm looking at it right now. He 10,000% got the ball. You're a liar. No, I'm not. Show Dells. I'm surprised that he went 0 for 10. If you want to say maybe on the like stomach or like the chili, that's really it. But it was all ball up top. Foul, Tara Rozier for Hater. his career. <laughs> For his career, he shoots 53.8% effective field goal percentage in the clutch. And that's the sixth best mark amongst 278 players with at least 259 field goal attempts in the clutch in regular season and the playoffs. He has the highest EFG amongst every player that's a guard in the clutch in, in the in the in history. Well, since like 96, 97 when they started tracking this stuff. Mm-hmm. So in the clutch, he's one of the best players. So dude. in all the guards that they were looking for, they brought in Kyle Lowry. Uh, DeJounte Murray was a potential spot they for him. They were throwing with Donovan they, Mitchell. They wanted Donovan Mitchell. They, Dame, of course. They, uh, absolutely. Damian Lillard. The it all Terry brought Rozier. them to Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier. Now, Rozier. now I Yo, don't just. Dis- well, they're calling this a block, bro. Just look at- it was a block. Look where he hits him. That's a block, bro. That's yeah. a foul, man. Stop. He barely hit the ball. It's game. Is that game seven? Yes. It's game seven, bro. That's not a foul. Not, I'm telling you. And the best part about that, LeBron is just not moving. Just Oh, yo, come on. He got fellas. 80% ball. No, he did it. That's a foul. That's, that's, that's a foul. That that I didn't see the other that angle. That angle that's did that. That's a bro. <laughs> I, 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 well, it's LeBron. You know they're not going to have the Celtics win game seven. But, you know, that's a foul. It's a foul. But I, who am I? I didn't see that angle. Wait, it was bad? Hey, it was foul spot. Okay. Foul spot. Um, <laughs> We're here, though. I'm dying at you saying, I've seen it a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I, that angle specifically, the one that, that I showed they you. Show, they side won't show you that crazy. other angle. Side the side angle, angle I didn't see. Side, That's like the Timberwolves that. angle with the three-point shot, man. That, well, that one that one was close. That was a little wishy-washy. How do we feel about a Rozier Hero backcourt? That's, the, that's the only question I have. Buckets. Is between Rozier, I don't hate Hero, it. Duncan. Like, you can't. You're going to have to figure out a way to make that all work. And if anyone could do it, it's Spo. But what do you mean by that? In terms of who's going to get. Got it. I just feel like with Spo, automatically they'll have a, a defensive we'll mindset for instilled sure. for sure. Bam Adebayo being one of the best defenders there, one of the best floor generals on that side of the ball, too. I feel like they'll be able to, to, to lock in on that side of the ball regardless. I don't think Rozier's this cone of a defensive player. Tyler Hero, he's not a cone either. Defense there this year. Yeah, for sure. But I think offensively, what we, what the Miami Heat have been looking for has been that scoring guard on a consistent basis. Kyle Lowry, that's not really him. We know him more as that defensive player, at least for the Miami Heat and his facilitating. But with Rozier... You got a little bit of both in scoring and playmaking also. You're not getting that same level of defense on that side, but you've wanted that third option 
that third score. Now, with the way that Hero has been playing since coming back from injury, you look for it to be Tyler Hero, but the last couple of times we've seen Hero in a playoff setting, he was injured, but then also the time before that really wasn't that good. So if Hero can take this level of play into the playoffs, you have Rozier be injected into this team as third, fourth option on some given nights. The Miami Heat are setting themselves up for a solid playoff run. It's interesting. It, it's it, it really is interesting how much expectation is going to be placed on Terry Rose here because you know he's is always it this guy's fault. No, no, no. It, it's, 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 it's as soon as he got to Miami. You know, it's as soon as it's he got traded. It's a steal. Trade. We got him for it, a and leg. I, and I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is it, way better than a Dame <laughs> trade. <laughs> yeah. I, I, listen, to go from Dame to we're getting Bradley Bill to possibly Drew to now Terry Rozier, it's a little crazy. That's what I mean. But Terry Rozier has definitely played well this year. You know, nobody's discrediting that. It's just now how how do pe- how would he look? In a winning environment where you're not going to get the same amount of attempts, you know, you're not going to get the same amount of touches with the ball. You got Jimmy, you got Bam, you got Harrow that got to eat. You know, you got a a functional, well organized, you know, offensive rotation, the offensive team to where they play team ball, they play selfless ball. How are you going to fit into that? I think defensively he'll be fine. You know, long arms. You know, he's a dog. You know, he plays hard. He, he's efficient from all three levels this year. You know, it's just about how can he? Because you mentioned it. They have Jimmy, they have Bam. I think that's to do. I think we can all agree. For sure. But if Hero and Terry can be those three, four guys on given nights, or maybe just collectively together be that number three option, it's a good thing. And they both can provide you multiple things. You know, three-point shooting from the three-point line. You get the mid-range look. Terry can put pressure on the rim. It's just going to be interesting because you got teams like Philly, who Joel Embiid, Maxi, Tobias Harris, then you got Boston, <laughs> then you got the Bucks. What does Will Rozier provide that insane jump? I don't know, but I'm excited to see how this looks. Yeah, foul as fuck. It's close. It's you're, close. No, that, that, that side angle looks 100% yeah, foul. Yeah, that side angle, he didn't foul. hit the ball at all. It took me the third replay to even semi think it was well, a you're foul. You're a LeBron guy. Yeah, what the, <laughs> the fuck are we doing? He no, this. that last angle, bro, this last one right here. Ball. It depends what angle you look. That, That's that what one I mean. didn't look clean, but the bro. one rib showed looked like a foul. <laughs> bro, he hit lie. straight palm, bro. But it's all right. You know, it didn't get called. If three of the four angles look like it's not a foul, hey. Of seven. course, the first angle is never going to look like it's a foul. I said three of four. I'll, I'll go two for two. So 50%? Side angle looks really bad. The front on and the back angle. Mwah. The side angle looks If one angle bad. shows it's a foul, it's a foul. Only one? Yes. Oh, my God. Because some, sometimes you can't see a foul the from the side angle. angle. <laughs> no, that's no, crazy. The side angle is no, egregious. Laughing. It's I'm egregious, laughing at him, bro. Laughing at me. <laughs> right, listen, man. LeBron got away with a call. Yeah. It's LeBron. Yeah. He gets away with a lot. It was a nasty one. It was lit, though. I've seen worse. It was in the third quarter. I've it wasn't even worse. that crazy. I've seen worse. Yeah. That's why I ain't mad at it. I've seen Brown worse. This year. This move, this move terrifies me. I'll be honest. Oh, Tyro Rose here is one of the dogs. He's going to break their he hearts. Ins- you time. instill fear into his heart. Every, every nah, Heat I, player. I've always been a fan of Tyro Rozier. Like that's, that's true. That's true. Boston I put him days. on. No, but it's just on. the whoa, fact of. No, okay. Yeah, scary but, Terry? Terry? I've been told you about him. He was in Boston, bro. He, was he has the Scary piece. Terry shirt. He was a pivotal piece. Now I'm just fucking. He's been in retirement for a minute. The late 2010s. Um. Did this you ever cop that shirt? Move. I, know, I don't have a scary oh. shirt. Nah. That shirt is uh, tough. It is tough, though. But this move, this is a great move for Miami. You know, they needed somebody who could be a little microwave, who could get them three-point shooting, who could play make. Like, Terry Rozier is a great player. You know, I think a lot of the uh, the conversations about him being on the defensive side or lack thereof, which I think is a concern, but you got Spo there. That's the reason why you just gave him a record contract. He's the best coach in the NBA by far. You got Bam and Jimmy Butler to make up some of those deficiencies on the defensive side. That's really the only question I have is you got Hero, who's been, you know, who is obviously going to be a big part of this team come playoff time. Duncan Robinson, who's apparently untouchable. And Tara Rose here. <laughs> those, are, those are three dudes that you want to be. Duncan in your, balling. And I know, but I'm thinking, talking about defensively oh, yeah, yeah. guys that could be liabilities. Um, those are three guys you want in that playoff rotation down the stretch. How is Spoke going to figure that out? But outside of that, you got to love what this brings to Miami offensively. And then for the Hornets, I'm excited to see what this is going to open up for Brandon Miller. He's yeah. been on a little three-game heater. He's been balling. I'm not going to say you're lying. Ironically, I've watched 12 straight points for the Hornets. Brandon Miller right now. I've He's watched been two, maybe He's three an Hornets all-star. games. Three, an three games in a row of 20. But one of the games I whoa, watched. Whoa. He was disrespectful. I thought Scoot would be better. That's it. He's been. And also, he is back. He has been he's kind of bad. Defensively, it's, it's kind of ugly for school. He's, hey, a, listen, he's small. He's, he's a guard. He's a point. He's a uh, so I, I like both pro- prospects, but you disrespected you, Miller. All I did was say I like Scoot a lot more. That's all I said. Never disrespected him. 
I may have called out his bad run in the NCAA tournament, but never did I say he would be a bust. Brandon a bust compared last to three games. I like Scoot. 27 points, 23 points, 24 points. Bugging. 11 to 13, 8 for 17, 8 he for 14. He crazy ass he shot. Hit he hit some clutch, clutch shots. He hit a clutch pull-up mini yeah. that put oh them up one on one to save that fourth quarter. He's nope. a bucket. Four straight 20-point four straight yeah. games. He's been fantastic. Oh, he's bucket. got 20 tonight. He got 23 tonight. He's been fantastic for them. Hey, you know, he's he outperformed some Every Miami so Heat player gets a boost of like 20 attribute points in the playoffs. They do. So you know Rozier is going to really play year, well. I think he's hurt. I think Eastern yeah, Conference he's MVP. Hurt. He's been banged out. He'll be ready for the playoffs, though. Don't Eastern don't. Conference uh, Finals MVP. So listen to this. Tara Rozier is fifth among shooting guards in PER. He's tied fifth with Anthony Edwards, who is is tied fifth with him. Oh, mid he's over Desmond Bain. He's over Jalen Brown. So, you know, the Heat are basically getting a Jalen Brown level player Basically, for... A first round I, pick. Uh, it, feels good, it, feels, it feels good not sure. being a super team, man. <laughs> According to Terry Rozier, would be our second best player. <laughs> According to PER, have you guys ever seen that Desmond Bain and Edwards just flat uh, surface that thing? Who's number three in PER? Yeah. Hilarious. Number three is CJ McCollum. Okay. Who's okay. number two? <laughs> Devin Booker, and then one is Mitchell. Shooting guards. Mitchell back in the conversation for best shooting guard, man. It's crazy. This, the the so league is so bad. volatile. Ah. It's so volatile. They slept, man. Oh, Booker's better. So he's playing with okay. SGA is Sox. better than both of them. Is SGA a two? Sure. He can be whatever and, and he wants. Edwards, what is he? He's a what is he? he Tyro Zier and Edwards comparable this year, Joel? Because their PR is the same. Corner PR. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's just showcasing the, the season Rozier's having, though. He's, he's having a legit all star year. Yeah. And that's why I think this is such a big boost for the Miami Heat. They didn't give up anything. Like, that's the they thing. You give up nothing and first, you gain a lot. Kyle Lowry contract. That's it. What's another level around? Terry Rozier, the player that can be moved, that would move the needle for you on other contenders. DeJounte Murray. Okay. I believe DeJounte can move the needle. Let, me, t- let me take a less lesser player than Terry Rozier because I don't think this player's in that category with DeJounte or with uh, Terry Rozier. Uh, Denny Advia. Denny Advia can instill some defense, facilitate. Honestly. That was, that's a ball nowhere move just now. <laughs> Denny Advia. He that's can a, pass. He can yeah. rebound. He just can get to... Is a little funky. It is a little bit inconsistent for sure, but... The defensive side of the ball, I mean, really, he could go to to a team and really make a difference, especially with the Wizards that are probably trying to to move off and get as many future assets as they can. And I saw you trying to laugh at Riff. Right? Yeah, I thought you were going to say Jordan Clarkson. I'm not going to lie. I do one even better on the same team, Corey Kispert. Okay. Okay. So we're just getting Wizards role players now? <laughs> we need to, I saw Kuzma we projected potentially going to the Lakers. <laughs> I, I don't Corey, hate Denny it. Denny Advia is a good player. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, think Corey Kispert could provide exactly what Duncan Robinson provides you, but a little bit more because I think he's a better ball handler. Den, Denny Advia is like the, a Kyle Anderson prototype. Swiss, yeah, teammate. Swiss Army. Okay. That, that's how he is. He's like mm-hmm. the seventh. or like He's the sixth best player on your team, come off the bench, maybe start on certain teams. I think he's a, he's a good player. Do you think Bogdanovich... Uh, Bogdan? Bo- Boyan. Boyan. Not Bogdan. Boyan. Gets traded or no? Nah, I don't think so. Really? I think them boys in uh, Brooklyn need to get traded. Royce and uh, Royce and Dorian. D- yeah. I think well, they, they won two first for Dorian. So. Nuts. Good luck. Yeah. Get those are, those are guys. Caruso, they're saying that they would move him, but they need multiple firsts. I'm here because we're winning. We're back. Why do, mm. why do you want to be back? I don't, but we're going to win. So fuck it. You're back. What the fuck am I going to do? Just guys, almost beat the Suns. KD went crazy so on you. KD you keep in. saying that, but you keep ignoring the other two things that happened. And what it's happened? getting me upset. What it happened? is getting me upset. All I know is happens that he hit you with the double Minnesota, pump. Minnesota. The, the, double, the double pump was fire. Alex Crusoe 6 3. Respect. No, no, no the I'm best not mad at it. That was KD. It's more KD. so KD being elite. Bro, the, the net didn't even move. Yo, and you <laughs> saying eight players are confident. All time? No, oh, I thought That's it was, was right been, now. I, I was talking all the time. Look at you. you oh, what were you saying? What I didn't read saying? it. It was no because the conversation because Kevin Durant was talking about he should be in the goat conversation. And people were like, somebody was like, name eight players. Name players. How many na- players can you name confidently better? Because I'm thinking he's talking about what Katie just said. So I was like right eight now. all the time. I okay. think I can name better than yeah. Katie just from a flat surface thing. Not now. No, fuck apologize. Though. That's why I was like, what? No, he's definitely eight, been eight top eight all this time. Year. You can name. All, yeah, I think yeah so. no, for sure. He's a top 20 player all the time. Yeah, yeah, KD yeah. Is. But I was just uh, saying, like, just more so top. He might be top 15. Top 12, top 13. Yes. Yeah. He's one of the best ever. Yeah. But I would say, hey, it was valid. Respect. No, fine. I'm fine. With I thought we were talking right now. That's why I was like, what? I'm saying, because uh, he's been time. bugging. The, the splits this season no, have no, been no. video I'll, game I'll say, ass. Say, we don't talk you. about that enough. We don't talk about how great Kevin Durant's playing at 35 years. Let's old. not talk about it because we can talk about it a little bit later. Cool. We know you know why we don't talk about it. Why don't we talk? Because about the playoffs have been and he's been fumbling. Well, last playoffs he averaged 29. I shouldn't first, have brought like, him up. Three months of the season. So that's what Kevin Durant. He averaged twenty nine. Yeah, but go. he wasn't really Katie. You know he wasn't Katie. But he was still he was awesome. Good. He's still great. He was great. 
It wasn't elite. Yeah. Okay. Let me pull up KD's boxes. a playoff riser. Historically, 100%, he absolutely. That's why he has two finals. 27 MVP points per game Riz in the Boy, regular Steph season. Curry. 29 points per game. And they went, went to KD in the final moments in every mm-hmm. single series. Congrats. Stop playing. I, that's might be cap, but uh, I'm not going to go back and try to figure that Definitely out. Definitely against the Cavs. He was on yes. the ice them series. He, because he, yeah, he needed that more than stuff. But against yeah. Houston? Steph closed it out. KD got hurt. He but did. before KD got hurt, he was on a heater. He was. Going into the fourth. Sure. KD's last, that actually, statistically, that run, the third go round, was KD's best. And they would have won Second? a championship that we year. Talk about, okay, when they, when they statistically, played correct. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And yes, they would have yes. won a championship that year. They would have. 100%. They yeah. still almost won a championship. Six yeah. games without KD. And then you lose Clay Thompson. Yeah, just, that was that was that though? series more of a six game series? I'm fine with Kawhi. I'm fine with Kawhi. One. I'm perfectly fine with Kawhi. One. You know. So, I think the world was happy that Kawhi won. Everyone was. Sure. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Kawhi's a I was good dude. Ecstatic when he won. Yeah, Kawhi was. The Warriors were. Fine. I thought they were done after that. I know. Once they beat your boy again for the maybe twelfth time, you know, and, oh then, and then they beat they they destroyed my Dane. boy oh my who you're rooting for now on the Clippers. Yeah, he's here. We're all here. We're all no. And anytime he says we now. Just know he's talking about the Clippers. Or OKC. Yeah, Rip gets oh in the car. God. He's like, yo, Dells, we, we play all Saturday. I'm like, 4 o'clock. Who? Like, I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. We'll be, there. we'll be there no matter what. 4 o'clock. You excited for that? I am. That's Kawhi's in Boston, playing? right? Yes. Unfortunately, you guys Where's destroyed us in LA. Yeah. yeah. We have Super Chats no here. No Zubak. This from Aiden Ramirez, San Diego ambassador here. Long time no see, fellas. But I'm on a cloud nine. We got Harbaugh. Love y'all boys and keep the great content coming. Yes, sir. You Don't deserve it, man, as a Chargers fan. Justin Herbert. Jets deserve it next. Ricky goes, low-key scared of the Suns. We need to give B. Miller his flowers. He's been hooping lately. Yeah, I was just talking about Glad that. got a young P- get Glad Charlotte got a young PG-13. We all like Brandon Miller. Yeah. Except maybe Drew. I maybe like Drew. Brandon. Yeah, you, I have like to explain, you have to explain to me what... <laughs> <laughs> a bus compared to Scoot looks like. All I was saying was Scoot would no, be you said the that that better was player. It's, no, but the way you said things, it was it's either Scoot's like a top five player in the league. You set it. him up to be like. Is, yeah. The thing was, and listen, call me a fucking fool, but when I would watch tape of Scoot Henderson, nice. it was mind blowing. Brandon Miller was that way too, bro. He dropped forty in different after, ways. He in dropped different forty ways. after some rules. No, no, no. In different ways. Well, Scoot's tape definitely. No, moved. Scoot's tape yeah. is also the, Brandon the, Miller's tape was. It was I don't moved. say this high, in using hyperbole at all. The game Wemby versus excuse me, it was the the yes, Metropolitan the versus, versus yeah. the Ignite. That is one of the best pieces. That, that of made him film the number one pick ever. right there. It's one of the best pieces of tape ever. You see Wemby tweak, and then on top of it. There's moments where Wemby has to switch on to Scoot, and Scoot is either pulling up right in front of Wemby or driving on him to the basket. I'm not doubting that. I know Scoot was an amazing prospect, but Brandon Miller was an amazing prospect I get it. too. He was. I was just more, like, significantly more moved by Scoot's tape. Yeah, but it, it was if, beautiful. It felt like throughout the draft process, whenever. Anybody would mock Miller to two to Charlotte. I was very against that because yeah. I felt Scoot was you the were better very, prospect. But it wasn't just. I thought he was the better prospect. Okay, but it, it wasn't just, oh, you know, oh, you know, this is a good fit. You know, I understand not taking Scoot. Fit. It was it a great was. fit. You said, nah, this would be the worst decision they would <laughs> ever make. <laughs> you needed Scoot. I thought Scoot was better. Well, listen, right now, Brandon Miller has been has been I better like by far. So how would really you want, do you want Scoot to play off the mellow? If we redid we, we that Miller. draft today, is, is Scoot going number two for you? No. No, I'm, I've been Amy wrong. just had his first triple double. I mean, double double. I've day. been wrong. We're so here. It would still be the same top three, but I've been wrong. Brandon Miller's definitely who getting would, his who would the top three. It was um, it Wemby. It's um, Wemby, Scoot, Wemby, Scoot, Miller, and Scoot. I still think it'd be same top three. I think Jaime definitely doesn't go seventeen. He, he might five. go top five. <laughs> top five? I think he uh, top five. Who went four or five? Osar and hey, Amen. Amen still goes top five. I, Amen I goes four. I think Jaime, Jaime might go five. But they, the, the Monty really fucking He's Mike, fucking him up. Ah. He's fucking him up. Because even still with him fucking him up, he's still getting to his spots in terms of driving the basketball, still a solid finisher. Still, and he's a great defender. And yeah, that Jaime, was my big thing on him coming out, is that I think he could be the best the, defender. Jaime going top five still sounds crazy to me. On the perimeter. He's been amazing, bro. Yeah, yeah. I just think it was right, a great situation. Goes six. It's because he's 22, right? Lottery teams don't typically. It's tough. It's it, tough. It's harder to redraft in their first year. Like if we it come is. back to this three years from so now and, and how many like goes top five, games. I'll be like, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I got I'm just check. going based off what we've seen from the rookies right now. Just early I rookie. I think Hami still goes to a playoff team. 
I'll say that. Maybe not 17 far off, but maybe like the Pelicans. He gets drafted over Taylor Hendricks. Yes. Sadly. Yes. He's drafted still. I yeah. mean, he's still a top 10. Jarris, he's a top 10 pick. He, he, he would get drafted Jarris. over Jarris. I think he'll be like yeah. 10. Worse. 10 yeah. He gets drafted over Grady. He probably gets drafted over Jordan Hawkins. And I like maybe Jordan Hawkins. Maybe he goes to Toronto. Well, he, Jordan Hawkins got drafted the pick after. Is Toronto. he get drafted over Bilal Koulibaly? No. no. Bilal's been tough. Anthony Black? No. When when he starts, they win. Yeah, he's actually... They don't start him. Kaysen Wallace? No. 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 Derek Lively? No. No. I don't want to think about that because then people are going to call me a Mavs hater. I think that's it. For the, the Mavs, though, they need Lively They needed, they needed Hame, front yeah. court. Oh, yeah. Derek Lively, come on. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They oh. need a front court. I know we're doing it early, but fuck it. We're here for, for fit, fun and fit wise, though. So yeah. the top five, my top five would be Wemby, Miller, Scoot. This is not an order. Uh, Derek Lively and Amen. That's top five. High made probably six seven, top six seven. Yeah, he's around there for sure. Mm-hmm. Like he's played himself until being one of the top yeah, players. Kaysen's in the class. Kaysen has yeah. been. I think Kaysen awesome. and Bilal still go before Jaime. I think Bilal's been underratedly good. I agree. On the defensive end. Like they said the good. only untouchable on the Wizards was Bilal. As what they should, should yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the only smart player smart. that knows how to play basketball right now. Uh, the fall might have fallen. Year five, though. We're back. Year six going to be different? Yeah. <laughs> Year six is going to be a different vibe. Ricky goes, crazy thing I played against Patrick Williams. Jaden Springer and Drake May in high school basketball. Have y'all played against a professional athlete? Did, he, did they cook y'all? We actually played... Against football players that played for the Giants at LA that day. Facts, we did. Were they good? It, it he was, was okay. It was Vincent Gray and the run, the, the linebacker kick return, yeah, uh, kick return and a linebacker. I forgot who they were. They were strong as fuck. They were, I, I would good. Imagine, they were solid though. They were solid. Athletic, though. strong. He was yeah. he was fast. He wasn't more so strong as he was fast. Yeah. The defense, he was the linebacker dude, course, played man. amazing defense. Like he was a hound. Yeah, big dudes. He was short, but he was like you, you, you've seen it. Like, in, yeah. in high school baseball. I played against someone. I don't know if he was a professional, but he had a D1 offer to Notre Dame. Struck me out twice on a slider back door. It was fucked up. <laughs> and it's crazy, too, because the pitch right before I struck out, I hit a beautiful okay. shot opposite field. Here's the line. The ball just landed right outside. I was crushed. I'm like, I played against uh, Jalen LeCue in 24-hour uh, fitness. JQ? Oh, and then JQ. No, Jalen LeCue. No, and then JQ. Oh, okay. I, I, I grew He's, up with he, JQ uh, and Fairmont. He, he, uh, he was in, uh, I forgot what team he played. I think he got... He didn't get drafted, but he got Yo, JQ's been Phoenix. balling in Memphis. He hasn't nice. played well. Happy for him. Yeah, game winning yeah, shot. A, a few. Ago. We had a few yeah. game winning shots. OD. Shot. Yeah, he's been cooking. I'm that NIL money is tough. It is. Somebody just got paid $1.4 million. Damn. Just, just, I think he, he is was, one of the biggest in. in college right now. Yeah, and Mikey's going to uh, USC. That's USF. pretty tough. Yep. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Central Florida, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I will be there no matter what. I respect it. Yes. It's kind of your twin. He's a little younger than me, so I can't really call him twin. At this point, bro, all these prospects are younger, way younger than us. Yeah, damn, now. It's re- we're reaching a new era, man. CJ's younger than you. Sammy Stroud's him, probably 20 years old. I thought he was like 22. 22. <laughs> oh, shit. You're 25, bro. <laughs> that's, that's not worse than Mikey's like 18. No, Mikey's 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This week in the NFL slash NBA, oh, I, I have an NFL and NBA one. Okay. So uh, do I. Overachiever. But, Drew, you can go first. All right, sweet. We almost ruined mine. Mine... My this week in the NBA is going to be centered around Kevin Durant. Now, I don't want to get into the conversation what of what he said, where he said, why am I not in the GOAT conversation? You know, what haven't I done? Now, I've seen a lot of people bash Kevin Durant. Now, normally, we, guys, we understand that I'm not the biggest fan of Kevin Durant. We understand why. But you know what? For a change of pace, I'm actually going to give him his respect and his due diligence. We understand how great Kevin Durant is. And him joining the Golden State Warriors has kind of fogged our idea of what Kevin Durant has given us in the NBA. 13-time All-Star, four-time scoring champ. If we wanted to have the conversation of the greatest, we can get into scoring with Kevin Durant. But, of course, if we're going to talk about the grand scheme of things, I won't call him the GOAT, but four-time scoring champ, two-time NBA champion, two-time final, uh, finals MVP, 10-time All-NBA, rookie, uh, all-rookie, rookie of the year, Two-time All-Star MVP, regular MVP in 2013-2014, was, of course, on the All-75 NBA team. Kevin Durant is one of the all-time greats. Would he be in the GOAT conversation? No. Do I understand where he's coming from if he wants to say he's the greatest? He has something, a category of the game that he can be considered the greatest at, and that's scoring. Look at the splits this season. They're video game-esque with the volume, with the minutes that he's playing to have the splits that he's having. Kevin Durant is one of one. We won't ever see a a player with the skill set 
with the talent of a Kevin Durant. Now, I know we've seen some some players similar, like you see uh, the way that Chet Holmgren and his style of play, people have tried to say it's Kevin Durant-esque. Brandon Ingram's another one that comes to mind. But with the volume, with with the sheer vo- the gravity that he has on a basketball court, we'll never see another Kevin Durant. And I say that where I saw, uh, I saw the clip back where this might be my favorite moment of his in Golden State. The my favorite and only good moment when he has that series with Patrick Beverly and the Clippers, and Patrick Beverly and him are going at, it and he's saying, "Listen, I could go one on one. I probably I, I could make a hundred percent of the shots. Shit, if if, it, if it's one on one, and then they start to bring help, I might make forty three percent of those. I my, my my efficiency might lower, but why would I try and do that when I'm trying to win a game? I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am." That is one of the best quotes, and it makes me upset that he went to Golden State because it fogs our idea of what Kevin Durant was because when he was on OKC, he was loved and cherished by all fans. He goes to the Warriors. He became the villain of the league, and it's unfortunate because years after he's left the Golden State Warriors, he's still been great, but a lot of dirt gets thrown on his name because he hasn't been able to, to reach the mountaintop without Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. But I just wanted to share some time because usually I'll shit on Kevin Durant, but there's been a lot of shit being thrown on him so far in the last couple of days. Let's give him his love while while he's still giving us this high-level basketball. I have two. Shout out to Michael Groggins, fan of the Mikey. show. Oh, Mikey! I hope Pink I said legend. Your, hope I said Mikey Groggins. Groggins yeah. Mikey Groggins. Yo, Mikey. Ain't that fan of the show. UConn fan, a Florida Gator fan in football, New York Knicks fan. He know his shit. So Giant Kyle changes. Lowry did get traded. He did. He's probably going to get bought out. And Mikey put out this post. If Kyle Lowry is bought out, he can't sign with teams over the first or second tax apron. So I'm going to name you potential playoff teams. You give me who you think he'll go to. So you got the Jazz. Okay. The no. Thunder, the Magic, the Pacers, the Kings, the Knicks, the Hawks, the Bulls, and the Cavs. Knicks would be interesting. I said the Cavs. I, I like the Cavs. I think the Knicks are, should make a move for Brogdon. I know that's been the hot topic, okay. but I think Brogdon's their move. Just Cavs, for defensive like. identity. And, Cavs and get another ball handler Timber off the guy. bench. Mm-hmm. That would be big. Who I like the ones? Cavs. I like the Cavs for the leadership aspect. I yeah. think the Cavs are a very young team. They could use Chief a Garland's stabilizer. Been, I love that. I love that. Kyle Lowry would be a perfect fit, fit there. You could, uh, you know, Garland can learn some things from him. No, I agree. Oh, you is know. that what you said? Yes, yes, yes. Because Utah, I'm taking out. OKC, I think I their think lineup is set. Yeah. They don't need that. The Kings were up there. The Kings, it, the it really depends. I think, He's I don't know how much uh, better that makes McConnell, the Kings. Though. The Pacers have Nemhard and McConnell, so yep. do they go and get Lowry? I don't think so. The Knicks, that's a possibility. Yeah. I think that's I a think, huge I possibility. I think Knicks are Cavs. Knicks here's here's my, uh, my, my, my last one. You're in an arena with 50 hawks, 10 crocodiles, three <laughs> brown bears, 15 wolves, one hunter with a rifle, seven buffalo, 10,000 rats, five gorillas, and four lions. Okay. Damn. Pick two to defend you. The others attack you. Goal is to survive one okay. hour. Can you send me? Can, can I look at that real quick so I can get the numbers out? Yes. Thank you, bro. Off oh, rip. The bear, bears. Look. I'm picking the gorillas, and I'm picking oh, the, the wolves. The gorillas, the gorillas and the wolves. So I get two, three brown bears, 10,000%. And I will take the five gorillas. No one's stopping me. I'm taking five gorillas and 15 wolves. Was it 15 wolves? So 15 wolves. Yeah. That's a good number. I think the brown, three brown bears. How many birds was it though? 50 hawks. Okay. Give 50 me the not too bad. Four oh, lions. I don't want no fucking wolves. Then. No, no. Four lions is intriguing. I won't say it's not. But five gorillas. Five gor- gorillas is stamped. That's a I'm lot. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's the one, one lock And night. three brown bears. Have you seen yeah, I might take the brown how bears. big a fucking brown bear is? I might I'm, go to brown I'm going bears. brown bears. I feel like wolves would be useless against a hawk. I feel like the lions would definitely give us problems. The hawks, because mm-hmm. they have the aerial aspect, a rifle. We might be you run fucked. out of bullets. True. And just one hunter. One hunter. So you we don't know how many bullets. It. Yeah. That's it. He dies, you're, you're fucked. I think that we, that might be the game plan. Off rip, we take out the hunter with the rifle. And then it's up. I think I'm going with five gorillas, four lions. Yep. The oh, four lions. lions. Four lions. One, no one bears. More, one more than the bear can outnumber them. A lion is tough. <laughs> Why are crocodiles on here? <laughs> crocodiles. I don't know crocodiles. Are. Unless we're in water, that's intriguing. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go with. I think crocodiles are one that can go on land. They so, can do both. Yes. Yeah. I think you're thinking of alligators. No, but like on land, a crocodile, like just it's a, effective, but it's how effective is it? I think that's why they're on the list because they're just as effective. I don't know. You think so? I think yeah. I think so. Really? Okay. I think alligators are the ones you're thinking of. All right, you know what? I, I'm going to go with one hunter with a rifle. I'm going wild card. Oh, I think bullets geez. work better than just fighting. Yeah, no, good point. And then I'm going to go with 15 wolves because it's going to give my my right, my hunter with a rifle distance. Just letting you know the bears are fucking you up. How many bullets do you think they could take? Three bears? A lot. You, unless you shoot them in the head? 
If you shoot, it's gonna take a couple. Well, I expect a hunter with a rifle. And then the five experience. gorillas, you're cooked. I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm going five gorillas. I'm not four take, I don't want to see gorillas. I don't want to see bears. That's the only reason why I feel like on a my gorilla squad. can take a bear. One on one. I got five. I think so. One maybe, on one. Gorilla. Maybe. And I got my lions. Maybe. A lion can take out. One lion can take out. Three Are we talking wolves. like King Kong level gorilla? Or we're just talking regardless. Massive. Well, King Kong is like. I'm like, just thinking that's a, that's a man, an over adult extension. male yeah. gorilla, bro. <laughs> hey, you just, just said like gorilla. Like gorilla. A gorilla's Do pretty I get big. King Kong gorillas? If that's the case, I don't need anybody I else. I just need one King Kong thrown out straight. Yeah. yeah. My game plan is a game plan of distance. I'm not trying to get hit. So, you know, I got the lions who they're on attack mode. They're running. Then you I got the You said the wolves, bro. You said wolves. Oh, the, you're not going gorilla? Nah. That's what oh, I'm not, saying. Bro. Oh, you're I said wolves? You know, yes. The five gorillas are all you said 15 wolves. Bro. Oh, you're right. Because I said 15 wolves because it's a lot of wait, them. Wait. So they'll keep Joel, Joel. the animals you, occupied. 15 wolves and one guy with a rifle versus oh, five it's a gorillas. Rifle. He don't got an AK out there, yeah. bro. He's going to have to reload. And then you got to like, fight five gorillas, four lions, three bears. That's alone. That's in the first, like... You're, you're not the guy with the rifle is not even entering my matrix. Nah, it's one dude with one gun, bro. And, and, you got and I have wolves. to see the wolves might be scared of the lions. I don't think you guys understand how scary brown bears are. How large is this area we're in? It didn't give an area. <laughs> so I'm assuming the jungle. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the size of a, of a zoo. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna do us a favor and type up brown. Look bears up how, how big scary. a gorilla is, too. Oh my god! Like if this is coming at me, I think I I die. <laughs> How, how big is a gorilla? I mean, how big is a, a Oh, my bear? God. They're they're massive. Hold on. I'm about to look up the size. So we got this super chat. At the Buzzer Sports goes, any advice to an up-and-coming analyst? Just sit down and do it. Sit down and, and do the work. I feel like that's number one, and, and that's where people kind of overthink it. It's like, yo, how am I going to set this up? How am I going to drop this? It just gets so much easier when you just sit down, record, and talk, and you do it consistently. Every single time you get better at it, it's just a matter of doing it. You don't get better if you don't do something. It's like the gym. It's like anything else in life. You only get good at it if you do it consistently. That's the only advice I can give. And don't uh, don't pass up any opportunity. Fact. You know, there's going to be people out there who are going to have less subscribers, less followers than you than want to come on a show or, or want to do a podcast, whatever it might be. You never know what they're going to be down the line. You For know, sure. like they could turn into a beat reporter. They could turn into an analyst. They could have jobs at, at high leverage companies. So... Once you reach a spot, never get to a spot where you feel like you're too good to do something for somebody else. You no know, doubt. like you're you're still got to, you know, get your work in, put your time in. But also like there's going to be it's going to be about connections down the road. So if you're going on a podcast that's got 100 subscribers right five years down the line, they could be the biggest fucking who knows Jaguars podcast in, in the NFL Facts. in five years. And all of a sudden you got that connection because it's something you did years before. It said everything that needed to be said. I don't need to give. It's kind of like P. P. Took a chance on staying on our show for three hours. Mm -hmm. He fucked with what we were doing. We ended up getting a little bit more success on our side. P. Didn't have to do that. P. Took a chance and just was like fuck it. Oh, I'm gonna respect said, their work. Fuck it. I'm here. He, now, <laughs> I, I remember it vividly. He's like, "How much more y'all got left? We got a couple more topics." He's like, "Ah, fuck it. I like the way y'all talking. Let's go. Let's get at it." I, that was him acknowledging what we were doing. By the way, a gorilla can go up to six. Six five, that was height, and mm -hmm. five hundred and fifty okay. pounds. And a, a brown bear can measure up almost to nine feet tall when they're standing on their two legs and they can get up to a thousand pounds. Mm, yeah, the lion Damn. nine to ten feet tall, but only five hundred pounds. I'll be honest, give me the lion and give me the brown bear. There's a reason why there's only three of them. Because it's OP. Oh, so you're over the gorilla. <sighs> The lion, you said 10 feet? The, lion, the nine feet? Nine to 10 feet long. But I feel lions are fucking lazy. They don't That's why one. I decided not to go lions. Because we know that they're crazy they're so when they get lazy, after it. Though. If you can tell me that the lions are female, I think I'd be in because they're the hunters. No, I'll stick with gorilla and I'll stick with the bears. We're just going to go too. out like men. Me too. Yeah. And I'll jump on one of the gorillas back if we're going to go out like men. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Yeah. No, I'm on the bear. Fuck out of here. No, the I need bear. the bears at their full strength. I need <laughs> you to. Bear. Uh, yeah. Bear. We're going to go out like men. I would say just say discipline, just be consistent, and learn from people that are doing it at the level that you want to do it at. So understand how they go about their process, understand what they do, try to get some insight there, and just apply it to yourself. I have an NFL this week in the NFL. The Jaguars hiring Ryan Nielsen. This is big time for me because Ryan Nielsen was one of the best defense coordinators last year with the Falcons. They went from a bottom 10 defense to a top 10 defense. They were top 10 and pass defense success rate, top 10 and rush defense success rate. 
and he's going to bring a level of physicality to this Jaguars defense. Last year, the Falcons aligned in press coverage 53.7% of the time on a wide aligned routes. The Jaguars in 2023 were at 16.7%. The Jaguars didn't get in their opponent's face. They didn't play a lot of press man-to-man, and I feel like they have the personnel to do that. With Tyson Campbell, with Darius Williams, I like Andre Sisco a lot at safety, and I think Ryan Nielsen coming to the Jaguars' defense with the talent they have at edge rusher at the secondary, I think they can be a good defense next year, and Jaguars fans should expect the leap. I think Ryan Nielsen was one of the top coordinators on the market, and they got him. For sure. I got two. Uh, one NBA, one NFL. For NBA, River, you're going to love this one. Let's start pushing Jalen Brown, all defensive team. I mean, please, what are we doing here? Please. Let's start pushing it. As a whole, Brown has a 41.7 defensive field goal percentage, which ranks second in the NBA, the forward position. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful game a couple nights ago against Joel's, Joel's Dallas Mavericks. Joel's, don't forget this, Joel's Dallas and Mavericks. And what the fuck did JB do to his his pride and joy, Luka Doncic? Bang, bang. I wasn't even going to bring up him breaking his ankles. Y'all only talk when y'all up, man. I wasn't even going to talk about him breaking his ankles. Jalen Brown guard Luka. 33 possessions. He allowed five points on two of six shooting. Mm. Man, Jalen Brown said before the season, we lost Marcus Not a Smart. good defender. We lost Robert Williams. You I stupid or you I gotta dumb? I got to make sure we can't lose this defensive identity. He's been our, probably our best defender. No, Derek White's phenomenal. Of course, Drew Holiday's phenomenal. But in, in terms of an on-ball one-on-one defender, Jalen Brown's been one of the best. Um, Look my, him in his eyes when he's talking about greatness. I'm looking NFL at you, one, Brown. My NFL one. No, moved. Uh, so last last week we did top five dynasty uh, draft for NBA. I want to do one for NFL, but no quarterbacks. Ah, I love this. Now so I know my number one pick. Let's do a top ten draft without quarterbacks for the NFL. Dynasty. We did top ten. One. Or we did top five. We did five. We did five. I want to do ten. Uh, we get defensive players too. Yeah, Keep so that in mind. We know who number one pool. is. Well, let's stop, let's stop playing games. <laughs> There's a lot of options okay, there. On the defensive side of the ball, there are some game changers. I have two in mind that I'm going with easily on defense. That's Sauce Gardner. That's Micah Parsons. Okay. Number one? No, just Not number on one. Defense. Just they're okay, in the top five. Okay. I don't know where Heaven they are, Jesus but they're in the top Christ. five. To be honest with you, though, I understand that he does have some injury history on his side. I'd still TJ, go TJ Watt still you, needs to be in yeah, this conversation for me personally. In a dynasty draft? In a dynasty draft, correct. Over Micah? He could go top Micah's five. Younger. TJ Watt could be top five. The youth is on Micah's side. I agree. The versatility is also on Micah's side. The impact. Who would be the first pick? The impact is Micah. I he think, had more pressure. No, this I think year. number one is probably Jet. I think number one is also Jet. <laughs> Jet is number one, baby. Justin Jefferson is number one. That's my fucking brother, for real. Honestly, it's hard for me not I think to say two is TJ Parsons. Next. Because his age. Michael Parsons is number Parsons. two. I can me. respect it. Yeah. I can understand. He's really fucking. He's like 24 years old. But there, there's really no one that personifies more MVP that's not a quarterback than TJ Watt this season. For the, I, think I feel like TJ is. Watt has a lot of moments, and he's an exceptional player. This year, Micah was better than him. Is Where's Miles mm. Garrett? He had, he? he had so much more pressures than him this year. TJ gets a lot of turnovers. And Micah Parsons is the most double-teamed he is. edge rusher in the league, but he's number one in pass rush win rate in the league as well. So do you, do you factor that over versatility? Well, Micah TJ, is versatile too. But well, Miles TJ Garrett also needs to be in, in this sense. conversation if we're going to do that too because of what he opens up he's, for the he's other versatile. Guys. I think Garrett and Micah are over TJ for I me. Can't, I think I can't TJ, do that. TJ's versatile in the sense where he can get you a sack, he can force a fumble, he can get you an interception, he can get you a pass. Like he can do damn near everything on the defensive His end. run stop is great he, too. Like Parsons is versatile on the line, but I don't think he'll be the one that gets you an interception or get you a high level turnover like that. I think if he plays that way, he can. Out of college, he came out as a middle linebacker. But he hasn't done it yet. That's why I say the versatility, I understand his, where it comes from. In his from. rookie year, he was playing kind of both, but then mm. they realized, oh, he's an elite edge rusher, so they put him there. Yeah. But he could be a great sideline, a sideline linebacker. He can, be, he but can TJ cover. TJ has been doing that. TJ don't cover. TJ no, no, I'm not saying cover. cover. I'm saying he, he can get you interceptions. He, he, he reads the, very well. The, a, inter, the interceptions are more so like on the, the quarterback. Yeah. He's throws it, it, he's tipping yeah. it up, and he catches it. It's not really it's not, covering the guy. No, but his, I, never but I don't want. No, I don't want them. I want them getting the quarterback. Yeah, I don't really like, and Mike gets after the quarterback. But, but, but they're both elite. Oh, Miles Garrett. Then you got to put Miles Garrett up there too. To say he gets him out of better when he has the record for most sacks in a season, tied of course with Michael Strahan. Did one last game. beating him in pass rush win rate and all that good stuff. Sacks are not important to me as pressures. I think pressures are more important because pressures account for how much you impacted every play. Does yards matter more to you than touchdowns? 
in the grand scheme of things. I don't think those are the same. And I actually think that touchdowns might be sacks and yards are what pressures That's are. That's why I asked you that question. Yeah, yards matter more. Like, if I'd rather have a player that got you, me 700 yards and two touchdowns than Ronnie Bell. <laughs> but like a Julio Jones where he could lead the league in yards, but then three touchdowns. You know what I mean? He's, he's still, he's he sets you up two. in position to score. That's but, how I see it. But with the Falcons, they struggled in the red zone. Yeah, because oftentimes the field gets con- congested and that player's doubled, but that should open up I I things for the offense. I do love a guy offense. who can get sacks, though. I do, too. I do. I love a guy who we can got finish one the pick job. on the board here. No, Max well, Crosby, well, where are we putting them? I think that we need a little bit more offense on that side. Like, I understand yeah. Christian McCaffrey's old, but why isn't CMC in this conversation? Running back. But still. I mean, his so Chase, so CD, that. Lamb. Um, I think CD goes know. back into the ten. Should we do top five since we can't even get to five? Just top two? five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, Chase know. is over CD. I'm thinking. Yeah, I would go. I would go. I would go. Jet. I can level. I'll go sauce too. I'll go sauce th- over Parsons. Yes. 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 I'll throw just because the idea we couldn't agree on. You just just, just because we couldn't agree on defensive line, uh, defensive player. So three, I, four. I thought we agreed on Parsons and TJ going next. Really, and then Sauce four and Garrett. I thought we was we was putting those three. So, up. so only one taking, offensive player. We're taking all these defensive guys over CD Lamb, AJ Brown, Amin, CMC, uh, Puka. Uh, I think I would Hill. take them over Puka. These three guys. I got I like Micah. Yeah, I got like Micah. Yes. Okay. I got like Micah. Yes. Like I think for me, the top four is pretty easy. It's Justin Jefferson is Micah is Sauce and probably Miles Garrett, and then number five will be Jamar Chase. Miles Garrett better than player. TJ. I think he is. Like this year, TJ Watt had 20 sacks this year. Micah Parsons had 16. Those are four more plays where TJ Watt had a sack over Micah. But in terms of pressures, Micah had 106 this year and TJ Watt had 86. Micah got he he got more pressure to the yeah. quarterback. He got 20 more. And Miles Garrett, he doesn't even rush the passer passer as much as these Miles guys. Garrett's elite. You know what Miles Garrett this year, he rushed the passer 522 times. TJ Watt was at 551, so 30 okay. more pass rushes. Mm-hmm. And Miles Garrett had more pressures at 89 versus. You know what it is 86. for TJ? That's why it's hard to not keep him because he has bigger something moments. Ab- something about him when he doesn't play, the Steelers drop off a fucking cliff. Like their defense just. And then when he plays, they're like, they win at a high rate. So it's like, it, it's always just correlated to him. So it's tough. I think he's top 10 for sure. Like in a. In a you know, in a fantasy draft, top 10. Top five, I'll prefer the younger We can guys, do different right? lists. I would personally have TJ in mind. Definitely need Micah in there as well. Micah has to be in there. Uh, I'll throw CMC as my last guy for the f- for the fifth spot, though. That's valid. For the way that he impacts not just the run game, but, of course, his impact Only running in the back in the top 10, well. I feel like he should be. And the, the last running back, is there another running back? There has to be. I'm just blanking off the top of my head. A thousand and a thousand. LT. No, a thousand and a thousand. Was it LT? Did a thousand and a thousand? I thought he did it. Did Chris Johnson do it? No. Uh, no? I know he had like... He rushed for 2,000. He had like 2,300 all purpose. It was he did. Na- it, it was, was a ridiculous. nasty number. He, he might have more. 000, 000. He didn't do? So I think CMC's the only one that did it. So I, so the final list, it would be Jet. It would be... I'll respect Micah. TJ. Sauce. CMC. I would take TJ out, put Miles, and then that's pretty much my list. I'll go Justin Jefferson, Micah Parsons, Sauce Gardner, Miles Garrett, and then I'd go Jamar Chase, number five. Uh, Roger Craig and Marshall Falk. Or the other Marshall two Falk. That was the last one I'm thinking of. Was never going to get that. Marshall That's when Marshall Falk was on the Colts, or was that when he was on the Roger Craig, or was that when he was on the the Rams? Uh, it was 99. So, so Rams. Rams. Yeah. I have Jamar Chase at five. Yeah, I, I respect it. Yeah. I respect it. I like it. I have What's one more this week in the NBA. Do that, I'm going to pee. And let me see. I'm trying to get it. That was okay. who's your five? I think I would go Jetta's one. It's tough. Jetta's one. Sauce two, Micah three. I would go receivers though, four and five. So, I think I would go Jamar question Chase. Question for both of you: Why Sauce and no PS two? I think Sauce, sauce is, better. is better. But you think it's a, it's a, like he's better enough to where PS two is not in the top five? Younger. It's marginal though. Is he younger? Like like he's the same age. Oh, this past season was. So you you, yeah, you saw what PS two said? He didn't give him no fucking seven hundred yards. I don't know where the hell that came from. Yeah, we'll put Chase. He didn't give him no seven hundred yards. I would maybe four hundred and it might have came yeah, against Miami. Sauce, you know. Okay, no, I'm saying no, I said chase over PS2. Yeah, just because I would go offense. So okay, I would, okay. I'll probably go. That makes uh, sense. Jetta's Micah, or Jetta's Sauce, Micah, whatever. Oh, Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. I still would probably put Tyreek at five. I'm not going to lie. He's not that old. Yeah, really. Well, he, well, he is 30. That's very old. I thought he was for 28. Till 30. 
What the fuck? Like, how old is he? I thought he was 28. He's 28. I thought he was 28, bro. I didn't know. And he was 20. If he's 30. No, nah, I thought he was 28. Damn. He's 29. 29. Okay. He turns 30 March 1st. Ah. He's 30. He's, he's 30. He's going right, to be 30. 30. Hold he's up. 30. Let me find someone else. <laughs> now, I keep. I still might keep reeking there, bro. No CD then. CD then, probably. I don't. You can't put CD for AJ. I think you can with AJ's injury history. CD's younger. Is he younger? I yeah. feel like you'd be exaggerating the younger part. I feel nah, like he's probably CD's, a year CD's younger. CD's definitely younger. He's like 24, 25. Yeah, I mean, uh, AJ's 26, I want to say. CD's 25. I'm jacking it. Bro, I feel like CD, is, CD's 24. When he's turning 25. He turns 25 in uh, April 8th. He's a fucking Aries. That's, I knew that was my brother. So man. Daniel Four Guerrero goes, rank these teams best to worst in order of which teams have the brightest future. He just me turn 27. Rockets, this Spurs, year. OKC, Minnesota, Pacers, Pelicans, Portland, Flint Magic. Every year. I got to yeah. I gotta read the comment. Hold up. Number one is OKC. Yeah. Number brightest two. Future. Yeah. Number two is the Magic. Sure. Number three. Where's your, where's your boys? Minnesota. Okay. Okay. They okay. have a weird future. They do. Yeah. They, they have a now and a future. Yeah. Number four is the Pacers. Mm. Number five is the Spurs. Number mm. six, the Rockets. I number don't know. seven, the Pelicans. I, number eight, the Blazers. I don't know if the Rockets are that low, but I get it. You could argue. You could argue any one of those teams. Yeah, I think it's just the guys over them. They have. I it's mean, Shangun is probably it's just Wemby. It's, 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 it's just Wemby. It's just Wemby. All the other guys Wimby. got solidified dudes. The Rockets you know? are winning right to a degree. Yeah, they're, they're winning right home. Now. Yeah, and Shangun's been awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just Wemby. I get it. You know, so I'm not mad at it. Pacers just traded away a couple of their picks for Siakam. There's two firsts this year and 26. They're 0 right? 3. They are 0 3. But Halley's missed two games of those? Yeah, he yes. only one. He had that stupid ass fit on yesterday. <laughs> that, that shit was shit hilarious. Was garbage. <laughs> this week. Like he's in Peaky Blinders. DeAndre <laughs> in. He made a comment in an interview and he said that I got nothing to prove in this league. I'm a max player and I'll continue to be a max player. I thought we took this out of the. No, this is I a thought this we week took it out of the. Oh, it's God. not a topic. It's a this Thank week in the goodness. NBA. Because when he said that, it got me annoyed. It got me really furious and frustrated because he's been nothing but a disappointment in the NBA. I think DeAndre has been the worst first overall pick in the last 10 years. Mm. And Ten? in case anyone was thinking about Anthony Bennett, he did his homework 11 years ago. Just missed a cut. Who were those 10 years? Who were those players? Victor Wembanyama recently. Easy. Paolo Boncaro. Tough. Clearing. Cade Cunningham. Goat. Anthony Edwards. It's close to one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get rude. I'm just here for laughter. I'm I just saw you glazing, but you stopped glazing. Whoa, whoa. I peeped. I peeped. Zion Williamson. Bust. Idiot. Kat. Clear's cut. Clear's Andrew Kate. Wiggins. Close. <laughs> yeah. And then the only two that are close that maybe you can argue for, Ben, ben Simmons. Simmons. Uh-huh. But I think Ben Simmons is, was is better, better was, than was. Yeah, Aiden. Was. Yeah, it was. It have but even though, would you, would you take Aiden on his max or Ben Simmons' final year of his contract? Ben, Simmons, ben final year of his contract, because that shit's going to be done. I'll be honest, Wiggins before Golden State. Him and Aiden. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> honest, you up. can only acknowledge Ben's just amazingness at that time if you played 2K. You ever play 2K with Ben Simmons when he was in his sure. prime? He was Just Giannis. Was. He was disgusting. Yep. He was fast as the fuck. The fact that you have to go back to 2K to I think know. about how good he was is embarrassing. Well, but. well, no, I'm just saying people disrespect him like he was never good. 2K who's, gave him his respect. Who's the biggest bust on this top 10 list if you had to pick somebody? It's Ben okay. Simmons or Markel Fultz. Yes. Okay. Yep. Markel Fultz, I would say, is worse, personally. Injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Markel Fultz or Aiden? You think Markel Fultz is would, worse? With respect to Markel... I understand but that I think injuries definitely it's different. derailed them. I, I would pick Aiden because it's more motor. With Fultz, it was injuries, 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 injuries. I think that's a little bit more. Like fair I enough. could be like, okay, that's fair fine. Enough. As opposed to Aiden, it's just like he just. You got it. it. Yeah, to be not. fair, when last season, because this year he's, you're right, motor has been a clear issue. Last year was a motor problem too. I'm thinking a year before that, it's always May, been. maybe, maybe, but. Uh, Last year, was, wasn't he 18 and 11 around It was that? like the most, like, wasteless 18 and 11 probably. But I ever. say that with the idea that I feel like at their peak, for what they were supposed to be, given Markel, given Aiden, I feel like Aiden's heights might be yeah, higher yeah. than Markel's, which is why I would lean Aiden in this situation. But again, I don't think Markel's a bad basketball player. I just think, you're right, drive is a huge issue for Aiden. And I, I can respect you saying that you'd rather that. like this. Like, what the yeah. fuck do you mean? What do you mean? Nothing to prove. I'd rather, I'd rather have Fultz than Aiden. I think Fultz has carved out himself mm. a role in the NBA. 
at least somebody that could be serviceable. And his career was unfortunate with the shoulder injury. He forgot how to shoot. Motorcycle. DeAndre and has been it's a, been a complete just malpractice of how to not care about something. Mm-hmm. And because he didn't have that motor, that's why he's in Portland averaging 12 points per game and doesn't want to shovel snow outside of his house to get to the arena to that play sh- for that the Blazers. Had How'd that report even got out, bro? It was crazy. If I'm, the called, team, like, bro, I can't get if I'm the team, I'm like, he's sick. He's he, got he family money issues. To pay Remember when that came out? I was like, how is this fucking possible? You're in the NBA. How is it that you, you can't find a way to, to get to the arena? Everybody got there, but the you. rest of your team got there. You guys must live in a and, general vicinity. And, you know, shout out to um, Gilbert Arenas, you know, friend of the show. Fan of the show, um, he said this. He they they were debating on his little uh, not let me not say little Jesus Christ, but his podcast, and they were talking about some. Would you rather take a ring as a role player, like something about a hundred million dollar contract? And it was like they take the money, no doubt, like no doubt. And it, and that like right that comment right there, not saying he wasn't a winner, but it goes to show some guys just come into the NBA for the money, like they get that first contract and they're like I'm set for life, like and listen, I'm not gonna knock a man forever. Taking Jason that money. $35 million is $35 million. You know, so some people, they come in for the money, and that's just it. And if he wants to take that mindset of, I just got, I got paid, my family's good, they got a home, I don't need to do too much, so be it. But I feel like there's got to be some type of some type of grind in you or some type of, you know, motivation, some type of competitiveness to you to be like, no, I want to be the best in the league. I want to work to be one of the best centers in the league. And it's just not there. See, but that... that- now, let's not get off topic because I know the conversation is about Aiden, but in this scenario solely, role player or star player that never wins and gets the crazy amount of money? Role player, I'm not taking that situation as opposed to being a rich player. No, no, no. You know what I mean? So, like, in that conversation, I definitely would rather be a max level player and never win a championship. Unfortunately, right now, that is Zach Levine. Like, I would rather a Zach Levine's role as opposed to, even though I know Caruso is a high level role player. Let me use someone worse. Give me give me a, a regular role player. Payne Pritchard. Sure. He could say million. Well, someone that's won a championship. Uh, Eight, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, but you could be a role player and also be a max player. Like Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. He's got yeah, 23. Fair. Fuck. Sometimes that role Faye player Thompson's gets you. been a role player. Uh JaVale? Christian Braun. Andrew Wiggins. JaVale. JaVale. Perfect. Andrew Wiggins Perfect. just got 28. No, all right. JaVale McGee. Never really got that crazy with back. Has been on multiple championship teams. Would I rather be him or would I rather be Zach Levine? I'd rather be Zach Levine. You have you just have one of the biggest contracts in NBA history. Yes, you haven't reached the mountaintop. You have people talking shit on your name. But those people are ants compared to you because you have this ridiculous amount of money. Sure. And it's just a huge disappointment. Agreed. He's terrible. And Devin Booker <laughs> challenged him to to play with a motor all year long when I think the Blazers beat the Suns or something like that. Everybody knew it on the Suns. Like when they traded him, they said this was all a, a decision that we came with collectively. It's crazy. And Grayson Allen is averaging more points as a role player with the Suns than Aiden is yep. as one of the focal points on Portland. So that, that's why with Aiden, it, it's just weird. He should have been better than what he was. How many more years he got left on that contract? Like I think he got like three. Ugh. Yeah, Portland would be alright though. Say, Pacers <laughs> dodged the bullet. They should thank yeah. the Suns every day that they matched them. Every day, it'd have been so- well. Maybe Hollywood got something. Halliburton makes people better in a way that not many men can make another man better. What the fuck? He ain't also a Chris Paul. <laughs> what the like- fuck? <laughs> stop! Ta- stop the Halley hate now. That's Halley. You You're laugh- hating on him. Uh, you know I'm what? laughing at you. Laughing at him. He played different. I didn't even laugh. That was just crazy. He he played with Chris fucking Paul. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Older Chris Paul. Chris Paul is still You're Chris competing. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Is Chris Paul still Chris Paul with the Warriors? Fuck no. Chris Paul was still Chris Paul with the Suns. He was. He was. Stop. He was. As a playmaker, they he went was to still the fucking that finals year one. You the rim pressure about, wasn't the same. You was talking oh, about it was a one A one B thing at one point. It well, was. Uh, now the you impact. You had Chris is, Paul as MVP. The impact is real. Never. <laughs> the impact is real. Never forget <laughs> that, man. I forgot that. My MVP is but Chris Paul. But we talking about just straight penetration, getting inside the hole. Tyrese was doing it at a better level. You like your penetration? You are a like son of a bitch, Joel. Jesus. Let's move on to the NFL preview for well the done. AFC and the NFC oh, Championship God. game. Chiefs versus Ravens. Let's start out hot. Give it to me, fellas. All right. So what? I, I, <laughs> what? What's this wrong with that? Sick man. <laughs> All right. I'll say this. We know where you're going. I don't know where he's going. I don't either. I do. I, I don't. Hope he's going Actually, he's way. not going to surprise me at all today. Now, I'll tell you what. 
I'm, I might be the one to surprise you because this was more of a thought process than I anticipated. Coming in, I felt as if I was uberly confident in the Ravens, but I do have to respect that defense from Kansas City. That's the one thing that I look at and think why this could be a closer matchup than I thought initially. But with the way that we saw the Buffalo Bills, and shout out to Riff. He really laid it out for me pretty well uh, on the way here. He said, look, Buffalo Bills did a decent job of trying to score on them. Riff was 100% right. The Chiefs got the stop when it mattered after the Buffalo Bills ironically got their stop. But really, you're right, Riff. The Buffalo Bills run game was pretty effective. Josh Allen was essentially able to do whatever he wanted. But the way that Lamar Jackson has been playing, I feel as if he'll still be able to get the best of that this Kansas City Chiefs defense. And I say the best where... I feel as if the Baltimore Ravens will win this game, and ultimately they will be moving on Why to the big game. Pick an hour. I didn't. Move, I didn't change my pick. I said it's going to be close. I thought you had Chiefs in the car. No, nah, I didn't. I have. You didn't have a decision I, in the car. But no, uh, it, no, it's not that I didn't have a decision. I said this one's a lot closer uh, than I thought. Which, yeah, I thought you were picking the Chiefs. No, no, no. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. I'm take credit. For um, making you change your mind. No, no, no. But what I am giving you credit for is the truth of what what initially had me. A little bit hesitant on my selection, you gave me some security with the idea of where the Chiefs defense has been their bread and butter all season long for sure. That secondary is legit, but that's not what the the Baltimore Ravens use to consistently thrive on in an offensive setting. No, they're going to really set the tone rushing the ball. That's if there's a weak spot to their to the Chiefs defense, it is rushing the ball. Where if you look at the advanced numbers and you look at success rate. Chiefs rush success rate is better than the Baltimore Ravens, but I adjusted it from weeks 15 to 18, and of course the 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 wild card setting. The 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 drop back for the drop back success rate for the Baltimore Ravens is just unbelievable. What they're able to accomplish on that side, the pressure that they're going to be able to get on Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, and with the way that we've seen Patrick Mahomes against the blitz so far in the playoffs, I feel as if Baltimore can get to Patrick Mahomes and make him. As uncomfortable as possible where Mahomes, you're not going to fully stop him. He's going to get his, but it'll be enough. With Joe Tooney also potentially not being in this game, with the edge pressure going to be immense for, for for a situation that the offensive line is still not the greatest for the Kansas City Chiefs. I feel as if that's going to be the difference. The pressure that they can get on Patrick Mahomes. We know that the Baltimore Ravens are the best pass rush in the NFL or statistically have been the best pass rush in the NFL this season. I think that's the difference in this game. I think Lamar finally has a signature moment, and he goes to the big one. I think the linebackers, for me, is is the difference for this game. You watched in the Buffalo, and you know me and Drew were talking about it a little bit while Dells was running late, doing things, inappropriate things. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we were in the car talking about it, and I was like, yeah, look, the Buffalo Bills, you know, they shout out to the Chiefs and that defense and Spag. They locked up in the fourth quarter. Like, they were able to make adjustments in the fourth. But from quarters one to three, the Bills were able to run the ball effectively, like eight-yard rushes, seven-yard rush, gashing them, gashing them. They were able to pretty much have a pretty solid game plan. And I think the Ravens' run game is better than the Buffalo Bills. They can all they can Most just definitely. do multiple different things with their scheme. You know, they can throw different rushers at you. And then they have Lamar, who's the best rushing quarterback in NFL history. You know, but I thought also, uh, thinking about that Buffalo game, they were missing their linebackers, their starting linebackers. So AJ Klein and the boys were out there guarding Kelsey. I think this is a different matchup in Baltimore where they have much better linebackers. They are a little bit more healthy in that department, which could potentially give Travis Kelsey some trouble because, you know, Kelsey, he was getting some big plays. And you saw the the, uh, the Chiefs offense. They weren't able to generate, you know, short, short, but it was a lot of big play, big play, big play. The, the Ravens don't give up a shit ton of big plays. You know, they're pretty great at that. But this is going to be a... A defensive game, like on on the sideline. This is going to be Andy Reid trying to figure out that defense, you know. And and I think it, them not having a number one could hurt. But on the same side, the Ravens don't have a number one. So I think Lamar is going to have a great game. Mahomes is going to have a great game. I think both of these defenses are going to come to play. But I think I think I got Baltimore in this one. I think you know how loud it is in that building. How they're able that defense to just get get home. Rushed the uh, quarterback and Mahomes wasn't sacked in that game, if I'm not mistaken, against the Bills. He was barely he was able to move and maneuver out the pocket. I think the Ravens have better pass rushes. I think they have a better defense, and I think they'll win this game. The Ravens are the most talented team in the NFL right now. They're the most talented. The only other argument is the 49ers, but when you consider the quarterback and the value of the quarterback position, the Ravens are are number one. This team has been dominant all year long. Their defense is elite. They have the most sacks in the NFL. 
Mike McDonald is going to be a head coach sooner rather than later. Todd Monken has been awesome for the offense. And Lamar Jackson has taken another leap as a passer this year. He's gotten much better. The statistics finally kind of back up what he was always able to do from a skill set perspective. Mahomes is on a Michael Jordan-esque run in the NFL right now. I have a hard time believing anybody's going to beat him. He's taken down Josh Allen. Him and Burrow are one and one. And Mahomes, now he got to face Lamar Jackson. And I think the Ravens have been chirping a little bit too much this week. Kyle Van Noy went on Pat McAfee and said that Mahomes is like nothing compared to Lamar. He says something around that type of statement. I'm fine with that. that. Players, players like Roquan Smith have come out and they've said Mahomes is just another quarterback. That's not what he said. He said he's an elite quarterback. We're like an he elite gotta, defense. He got to lace him up like everybody else. That's what he said. What's wrong with that? He said he's an elite quarterback. That's not paying respect to how great he is. Well, what do you want him to say? Oh, oh, here we Patrick go. Mahomes, you're oh, fucking go. You, you want to say what Lamar said? <laughs> well, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's about you know who you're facing. We're facing well, Patrick he Mahomes. He's elite, but we're elite too. Lamar said, "I don't like competing against Pat Mahomes." Respect. <laughs> that's that type That's the of respect. respect. You, need <laughs> you want it to so. seem like a, no, like a little boy. The, like, yeah, I don't it's want not to a little boy. He's saying it's going to be a tough challenge containing a quarterback they like that. I'm going to be up to the challenge. They know their ability. He ain't said it. He said he's just another quarterback. He Is that not disrespect? That. He said he's an elite quarterback. I didn't, I didn't hear the quote. So <laughs> now, now listen, man. I feel like they've been giving Mahomes bullets and material, and yeah. last year. Mahomes won a Super Bowl, and everybody didn't think he was going to win it. This year, all year long, I know that the Chiefs have been showing us what they have been. The offensive struggles, the mistakes on offense, but in these last two playoff games, they're back to playing top three offensive football. They look as clean as any offense in the NFL right now. What they did against Buffalo, I think, can be replicated against Baltimore. Against Buffalo, they went out in a lot of heavier personnel, 12 and 13 personnel, having two tight ends or three tight ends on the field. The Ravens this season rank 13th in success rate and six and 15th in EPA per drop back against 12 and 13 personnel, which means the defense is still above average, but it's not elite against heavier personnel. And I think that's how the Chiefs will attack this defense. And against the run, even though the Ravens defense is elite, much like the Chiefs' weak point is the rushing defense, the Ravens' rush defense this year is 12th in success rate and 19th in EPA per rush. Yep. So this is a team that you can run the football on. Yep. Joe Tooney potentially not playing is huge news. I think he will play. I think he will really? play through his injury. I think okay. I think he will play. That interior offensive line is as good as anyone in football right now. Fair enough. Mike McDonald's bread and butter is how he can confuse quarterbacks. It's very hard to confuse Mahomes. Mahomes has seen every single different coverage. And last week we saw the Ravens really handed to the Texans. CJ is a rookie quarterback. He has not seen that type of defense. He was a bit rattled in that, and he wasn't able to process what McDaniel was doing in in real time. He's young, so he'll learn that. Mahomes is at that level where nothing's going to confuse him. Teams don't blitz him anymore because when they do, he gashes it. The command Mahomes has at the line right now is all time. And this year, the Ravens have struggled on offense against the Blitz. And we're talking about a coordinator who the Ravens are going up against, and Steve Spagnola, whose bread and butter is getting pressure. I understand in the first half of the Texans game, the Ravens were awful against the Blitz, and they turned the switch in the second half. D'Amico Ryan showed his cards in that game. You always knew when he was blitzing. Spagnola is going to mix it up. And that's the one area that this Ravens offense has not been truly elite against those pressure packages. I think it's going to be a back and forth game. I think it's going to be a defensive matchup. My final score is 24 to 20 Chiefs. I think this is a really close game, but there's just something about this season about Mahomes proving something even more than he's already proved. And I think he goes to another Super Bowl. One thing I'll say is usually you're spot on in terms of when you blitz Mahomes, nothing good does happen. In the regular season, he had an EPA of 16, 0.16, and then a passer rating of essentially 95. So far this postseason when he was blitzed, passer rating of 71 and a zero EPA. So I say that with the idea of we've seen the game plan against the Chiefs 
to try and get pressure on Patrick Mahomes. In that situation specifically, it seems to have been what has given defenses the most success so far in this playoff situation. That's the deciding factor for me, like I already said, the pass, the, the pass rush of the Baltimore Ravens getting pressure on Patrick Mahomes, especially if Joe Tooney's not going to be playing. It's going to be tough for, for Mahomes to, to, to not have probably his top guy out there on the line, and especially with the way that the Ravens have been playing football recently. It's going to be a good performance from both sides, I believe. I'm sure that those stats are, are factual. But against the Dolphins, they blitz them a lot. And I felt like nothing but good things came from the blitz. And against the Bills, whenever they blitz them, I thought Mahomes, I mean, he was kind of he was perfect of against the Bills. He was perfect. In the regular season, the number isn't at a top top of top of the rate league with the EPA. I was gonna say number one was Purdy. Yeah, because preparing for the blitz is a lot has to rely on scheme. Do I think that Hurts is as bad against the Blitz as what he showed this past year? No. I just think the offense had no plan. The Niners often have one of the best plans against it, and in years past, the Chiefs had two, but with the trust that Mahomes lacks in the current receivers, that's where it's kind of been very up and down, but they don't blitz him a lot anyway either. You know, They still play too high on him, and they have light boxes, not because of the receivers, because of the respect they have for Mahomes. I just feel like this is one of those games where you have to, to beat the Ravens defense, you have to be surgical. And that's what Mahomes is. Yes. He's transitioned from being a quarterback who slung it all over the field. And in 2018, you know, being one of the best regular season quarterbacks ever, 2019 to adjusting now post Tyree kill. And he's now turned into more like Tom Brady, where he's going to take whatever the defense gives him. And it doesn't matter if he has to go on a long drive or short one. He's just going to do whatever he has to do to get the job done. I just have a hard time believing that Mike McDonald is going to confuse Mahomes. And I think Andy Reid is up to the challenge, too. And they finally know how they got to play. They're playing ugly and they're winning ugly, but it's a win regardless. And they're leaning into that identity. And I know Mike McDonald's going to get a job regardless, but this could be his signature stamp of mm -hmm. I'm a head coach. Yeah. You know where I'm going here. It's always <laughs> been Baltimore. It'll always be Baltimore. Uh, this stat has been flying around a lot, but I got this from Michael Smith, Pro Football Talk. Ravens have nine two-touchdown wins over teams with winning records, which Jesus is unprecedented Christ. in NFL history. They've been dominating teams all season long. And if this was the first round of the playoffs, well, I got a little spicy about the Chiefs. You know, called them a little bit overrated. Uh, didn't really, the offense didn't really move me. Might be up here saying, the Ravens are going to take care of business. Win by two yeah, touchdowns. Uh -huh. But what happened the first 18 weeks of the season at this point in the year doesn't matter. You know, sure. these last two weeks, the Chiefs offense has been humming 26 points, 27 points. 350 yards, 400 yards, been able to throw the ball. They've been able to pass the ball, uh, or excuse me, run the ball. The offense is working. It's clicking. And honestly, I don't even know if it's been that ugly. <laughs> you know, maybe the Miami game was a little bit ugly, but that Buffalo game, they were able to move the ball pretty easily. But it just feels like it's the Ravens' year this season. Man. Uh, I think offensively, as you mentioned, this is the best I've seen Lamar Jackson, even though the 2019, the numbers are better. As a passer, it feels night and day to me. Um, as a rusher, maybe not as electric, but he's still able to pick up chunk plays, still able to... Um, you know, leave people in the dust, be able to break tackles. But now he's getting down more than I think he was that first season. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned how D'Amico Ryans was kind of showing his hands a lot against uh, against the Ravens last week. We saw it at the end of the first half. Three straight possessions for the Ravens. They go three and out, right? They score a touchdown in the first quarter. After that, D'Amico really starts dialing up the blitz. They go into halftime, that last possession. They lose like, I don't know, 10, 15 yards in the last possession of the first half. Coming out of halftime, the Ravens go touchdown, 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 field goal. Leave the Texans at 10 points. They don't score again in the second half. The defense as a whole allows three offensive points. So while I do think Spags is going to be, uh, you know, disguise it more than what D'Amico does, I think Todd Monken has shown us that he's able to, one, figure it out, and two, be able to adjust whenever sure. they show they're going to blitz or disguise. So whatever Spags is going to show, I trust Todd Monken at this point to be able to figure it out. And I think the Ravens have the personnel, especially with Mark Andrews, expected to play. I don't know if that's guaranteed yet. We'll see. But expected to play is going to be a huge boost to this offense. Of course, having Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, those pieces out there are going to be great. This is the best team in football to me. They've been the best team in football, I think, for a majority of the season. That Niners win has stamped it for a lot of people. And right now, the Chiefs are fantastic. Mahomes, Andy Reid, if you want to go with the Chiefs, I understand it. But I still think year to year, there's going to be a team every once in a while to be able to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. 
And I think this year it's the Ravens. Uh, the, the Ravens will need more than just Lamar Jackson to be great. For sure. You're going to need some interceptions. You need Justin Tucker to be perfect. You can't have any silly turnovers on offense because we saw it last week. I thought Buffalo was was damn near perfect. But you know what happens. Your kicker misses a kick, and that's the end of the game. Um, so I have, the, I have the Ravens win this, I think, 27 to 20, you know, around that. Um, but I think it's going to be a great game. This feels like the two best teams in football to me. The Niners get their respect, undoubtedly. But the way the Chiefs are playing right now on offense, paired with that defense, has been one of the best in the league all, all season long. This feels like the two best teams. But I think Baltimore's been a little bit better this season. I'm feeling 24-17. That's the score I'm going with. I feel like the way that Baltimore's defense has been pretty dominant all season long, Lamar and company will be able to just put enough points. 24-17, that's what I'm leaning with. I think that... Mahomes adds on to his legacy by beating a team that is so great. Like, I think nobody's expecting it. You mentioned not getting sacked. I think they're four-point underdogs, three and a half, something like that. The last three times he's been an underdog, well, last two times versus the Bills and versus the Eagles, he's won both in the playoffs. He was an underdog versus the Eagles, I know, because I took the plus 100 odds and I bet that game. The Eagles last year had a historic pass rush. I say historic because I thought they faced a lot of easy teams and really inflated their numbers. Was it third most sacks all time? Yeah, I mean they they were they had a ton of sacks. Ton. I think they had more sacks than what the Ravens have this year. The Eagles that got zero sacks on Mahomes. He is one of the toughest players to break down. It was also a slippery sack. a slip and slide <laughs> over there in Arizona. Yeah, still, you know, they weren't able to sack him. I mean, Mahomes is slipping too. I mean, he's not the he, he's affected by the turf too. It's not only the offensive lineman or the defensive lineman. So, I think Mahomes in his last three playoff games, he's had zero sacks and zero interceptions thrown in each of them. He just doesn't make negative plays when it comes to this moment. The Ravens, I think, can can still win this game without creating a negative play. I think their offense is that great. But I do think in the first half, the Texans were able to get success against the Ravens blitzing. I think a similar game plan you bring in this week if you're Spagnola, but you just kind of tweak it a little bit so you're not showing your hand as often because in the first half I mean the Ravens had a 29 percent success rate on offense when they were blitzed it was terrible and I trust this Chiefs defense I don't think they're going to sell out for the run like they did against the Eagles in the Super Bowl but these defensive backs are much better now Trent McDuffie Legereus Sneed I think Legereus Sneed is the best corner in football right now how he's played this year they're going to not be afraid to line up man to man Against those receivers, just in the playoffs, OBJ. I'm assuming because I don't, I don't, don't think you think a, he's better than Sauce. Now nah, he's been better than Sauce Steve. this year. Legarius Sneed is my number one corner this year. This season, he's the number one corner. I hope he walks. He could. Oh walk. my god, I would love that. It's because yeah. he's gonna get a bat, bro. Like he's he might see twenty mil. Legarius Sneed is the biggest snub on an All Pro team. He should have made it. Trent McDuffie made it as a nickel, but Legarius Sneed against every top end receiver, he's held them in check and he's like really shut them down. One of the lowest completion percentage, one of the lowest pass ratings when targeted. He's been the best corner in football. And he Sauce doesn't shadow, but that scheme, that's not him. Legarius Sneed has been shadowing this year, and that's the separator for me. So he's better than Sauce. This year he's been better, yes. I think Legarius Sneed is. Why you pick him on the on fantasy five team? Because he's older <laughs> than Sauce. 26 ain't moving. It ain't bad. It's not crazy, but Sauce got more tools to be better. I mean, last year, Sauce was better. And Legarius, Sauce shadowing last year? Nah, he wasn't shadowing. That's not our scheme. It's not our scheme. But uh, Legere Sneed this year, he I think for me, he deserves that respect as the number one corner in football. Lions versus 49ers. You know, I was thinking about this game, man. <laughs> because I would love for the Lions to go to the Super Bowl. And then when I, I was thinking about the matchups, and I was like, okay, well, the Packers ran the ball well against the Niners. The Lions got a better run game than the Packers. Aiden Hutchinson has the most games this year with five plus pressures. He's a superstar. Oh, glad he, you realized. He is going to be lined up across Cole McKivitz. McKivitz is a right tackle. Mm -hmm. Food. Aiden might have total control of this game. The Lions, they don't do a lot of things well defensively. What they do do well is that they stop the run. The way to beat the Niners is you have to force Purdy into obvious passing down situations. That is the recipe, at least the best chance to beat the Niners. Jared Goff, last time he played the Lions, I mean, played the Niners, 300 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Back in 2021, he was with the Lions. They weren't as talented as they are now. 2021. 
I mean, who's going to guard Amon Ra? The only person I trust is Charvarius War. Amon Ra is an honest Echo question receiver. right there. Who's gonna, yeah. It's an honest question. I mean, I look at the matchups across the board, and I just say, man, the Lions are checking a lot of boxes. And then I hear that Debo might not play for this game. He might not, he might not suit up. And as I'm going through all the matchups, all of them, I'm going check, 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 check. So you know what? I'm still going with the 49ers in this game because they're a better team. But the Lions match up really well with them. They do. And this, it wouldn't surprise me at all. But I'm going with Gotta the Lions. Gotta be honest, never thought you were going with the Lions. I don't think Brock Purdy has back-to-back stinkers. I don't either. 60 degrees and, and cloudy, no rain. Now, you mentioned the one thing that they do great. That being the Lions' defense is stopping the run. To Kyron Williams, they gave up 4.7 a carry. And to Rashad, even though it was limited opportunity, 6.1 a carry. And Chase Edmonds himself had almost five yards per carry also. So what does that tell me? The Niners, who are a better rush rush offense than both of those teams because they have the best running back in football, I feel they're still going to be able to assert their dominance in that regard. Also, shout out to Prize Picks. Right now they have a promo. Christian McCaffrey, all he has to do is rush for one yard. Oh, wow. More than one yard. That's all day. Go ahead and and maximize on that while you're you're out of use code PAS. Uh, You get 100%. Of up to a hundred dollars if you win if and when you sign up use code PAS. So if that's going to be one of their focal points, which it should be because it's Christian McCaffrey, he's going to be able to assert his dominance. Now Brock Purdy in terrible conditions in San Francisco against the Packers, we can agree he was not the Brock Purdy that we've seen in the regular season. No way, no how. But when everything was on the line, when he needed to be great, he was, and he was perfect. And that last drive that got them the touchdown that Christian McCaffrey, of course, ultimately ended up rushing in. But throw after throw, pushing them down the field with ease. He just needs to carry that mindset over into this game versus Detroit, and they should win pretty comfortably. I think this is going to be a great matchup. I think the Lions are here for a reason. I don't think that this will be a cakewalk for the Niners by any means. I mean in the sense of if Brock Purdy can play with the confidence that he showed on that last drive versus the Packers, the Niners should win this game. I'm going to take the Niners to win here. I'm going to think that this is still going to be a solid performance by Detroit. I do believe Jameer Gibbs and Dave Montgomery will have their impacts felt in this one. No one stopping Amon Ra does not matter. We could say that the, the weather conditions stop the, the Green Bay Packers, but let's also shout out San Francisco's defense who did a decent job of limiting the Packers as well. We saw the Packers be, if I'm not mistaken, what top seven in terms of EPA per play with how awesome and affected that they've been, especially late in the season. Second half, Jordan Love has been one of the best quarterbacks. We saw that Niners defense come correct against the the Green Bay Packers. Rush defense wasn't maybe the best in that moment. Aaron Jones definitely was able to get his, but the pass defense was awesome. I look at this matchup, and I think Jared Goff has been, you could argue, the most impressive quarterback in the playoffs, right next to Patrick Mahomes. And, of course, I'm fine if you want to take Mahomes. He is Mahomes. But Jared Goff, for, for what he's been known for, and let's acknowledge John, of course, because I don't want to sound like I'm stealing his flow. But, of course, John did come up here and say, John, that, that he might be better. Well, not oh. just the hammer. I'm not going to talk about Isaiah Pacheco. Okay. No, but I'm talking about <laughs> him versus Dak Prescott. He's saying that that this run alone, you could comp- you could say that, hey, this has been a better run than Dak's had in his entire career. He hasn't had a run. But, exactly. Yeah, really. So let's give Jared Goff his credit against, against the Buccaneers. He was electric against the Rams. He did an excellent job especially against the Blitz, where that's been number one, where he has really been not his best against the Blitz this this postseason. There's been nobody better. He's been, he's been fantastic. So I think Jared Goff and company will still have a solid performance. I just look at that offensive side from San Francisco and just think it's going up against a far inferior opponent, and I think the Niners get it done. It's been a fun ride, Detroit. I want to take them, you know, the unbiased analyst that I am outside of the Jets, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Boston Celtics. Outside of that, the most unbiased Jesus Christ. person I know. Um, it's been a fun ride, Detroit. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be picking you. Just You're not like, in a dome. Just like 90% or 99% probably of, of analysts this upcoming week won't be taking you. But I, I think you should feel like you have a shot. I don't Gotta. think you should be going into this game. You're a seven-point underdog. I would take the plus seven there. Agreed. I don't think you should be going into this game saying we got no shot. This shouldn't be some like insane underdog story because when you go bar for bar with the Lions and the 49ers, it's close. You know what I mean? I think defensively, 
that's where the Niners really stick out, Agreed. especially at the linebacker position in the secondary. Sure. That's really where they separate here. But quarterback, Jared Goff probably has a better arm. Purdy is a bit more mobile. Running back, CMC is the best, but Gibbs is a top five talent, so in my fucking opinion. Good. If you don't have Debo, Ayuk, and Amon Ra, that's neck and neck. George Kittle is more proven, but Laporta is a top five talent at the tight end position. J-Mo I, breaking out. And I like the offensive line. Oh, a hell of a lot was more horrible. for Detroit. It's crazy. More than I do for San Francisco. Josh Reynolds, I said to Trent. So I do think there's a lot of a lot of factors for your Detroit fans saying, listen, offensively, we could go bar for bar. Yep. And if you're able to get into a shootout here, where that's kind of how I felt about the Packers too, where you're going to have to put up points because I don't know if I trust the defense to stop San Francisco. I feel a lot more. I feel a lot similar here where if Detroit's able to put up points, I think they'll be able to do that. I do think they'll be able to move the ball against San Francisco. Ben Johnson's one of the best offensive minds in the NFL. He's going to sure. get a head coaching position most likely the end of the season. The way Goff is playing in this offense with all the weapons around him, they'll be able to ball out. And I think they'll be able to run the ball, get Gibbs incorporated, get David Montgomery incorporated. And if they're able to pressure Brock Purdy, they're able to, of course, I know you said he was best EPA in terms of facing the blitz, but if you're able to, you know, hurry him, get pressure on him, get your hands on him, sack him, get hits on the quarterback, let's see what Purdy responds to in that situation in the NFC Championship game. But I got to go with the, the 49ers here. They've just shown all season long to be one of the most complete teams in football. Outside that loss to the Ravens, there's really no knock on their resume. You could go through the lines. There's a couple more knocks on their resume. And, of course, being at home. You know, the weather is going to be fine, so I'm not expecting this Jared Goff, you know, complete disaster by any means. I think he's going to have a great game. But the 49ers at home, it's a tough place to play to go into. I think it's going to be a great game. You know, I got I got the the Niners winning 27-24. I think it's going to be that. close. I think three, four-point game could go either way. And if Detroit's able to force a couple turnovers, get a few sacks, be really good on third down, I think they have a legit shot in this game. But the way the Niners have been playing on both sides of the ball, Brock Purdy probably feeling like I need to go out there and prove it. Even though I had a game-winning drive, I need to prove it that I could play a great full four quarters in a playoff game. I got the Niners winning this game. <laughs> you know, you almost fooled me. You, you, did, you, did. <laughs> <laughs> you almost caught me with the ball. Just as you, were you really thought he was going to pick the line? It's just funny how he tries every waking moment. When he gets a chance to try Slandering to put down Purdy, you know? true. What I say about Purdy? Slandering the Niners is is indirectly slandering Brock Purdy because we know where you want to go. We know if they don't win it, the biggest reason why it's going to be. Yeah, no, well, they're not. They, they're going to win it. And I, all and, huh? Super Bowl two. I don't know. It depends on they play. That's getting there is the goal. Let me ask you a question: If, if the Chiefs lose, right? We're, no one's going to blame Mahomes. It's just the Ravens are elite, correct? No, I think people will blame Mahomes. But based but on how if the plays. Niners lose to the Ravens, you think they'll think about moving off Purdy? No, no yeah, I never said that. No, but that's not my question. If the Chiefs lose, they're going to blame Mahomes? It depends on how the game happens, how it transpires. Usually, you know how it happens. He's never going to get blamed. He's not going to. If, if Mahomes plays well, they're not going to lose. If Mahomes plays like how Mahomes plays, he's not. They're not going to lose. They're going to win it all this year. They're going to go to the Super Bowl. And they're you know, win. I, I actually thought about it just because I'm a generational hater. Uh, you said in these situations, Mahomes never makes mistakes. I thought of one. Against the Bengals mm -hmm. when he got intercepted, throwing into double coverage. It's one of the rare ones <laughs> in the AFC Championship game. Yeah. There's oh. none, then there's some rare ones. There are some. There's some it quarterbacks. Happens. That's, that's to be every once in a while. They don't get. They don't get away with much. You know, there are some quarterbacks that get away with a lot, like Russell Wilson going to the Super Bowl with four interceptions, four. but through the game-winning touchdown. Can we talk about Brock Purdy? Thank you. Let's talk about Brock Purdy. Please, please. <sighs> My brother in Christ, Brock Purdy, man. Listen, I'm not a Niners sure. fan. I'm not a Niners fan. Don't don't care about him at all. But it's been a fucking journey for me and my brother, Rob Purdy. Going from Sam Darnold might take a spot. Trey Lance might take a spot. Sam Darnold looked better. You know, the Ravens. Then, 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 oh, go, then going from, you know, he's not top 15. You know, he, last pick in the draft. It's just been a great journey. And I think, you know, all hats off to this brother. You know, he did injure himself in the NFC Championship game last year. So he didn't get the opportunity to put, you know, his effort out there. You're but sad the, about that? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah I'm, I'm so fine, you know, he's here now. So that's he what's important, now. you know, and I hope he plays a full healthy game because I'm excited to see that. The Lions have definitely shown grit. They've shown that they're a much better team than what we expected them to be. You know, back-to-back -back wins against the Rams, against Tampa Bay. They did have the home field advantage, which helped them out for sure. But offensively, they, they've looked great. Defensively, they've made some plays, and that's what you want them to do. Against a team like the Niners, they're just, they've been dubbed pretty much the best team in the NFC probably since week one. You know, they've been one of the best, they've been 
just on both ends of the floor, they both ends of the field, they've been great. You know, defensively, you mentioned it. They have their holes. They have they they have their flaws. But offensively, last week, I thought. You know, if Purdy doesn't miss a couple of those throws, they they have a pretty great offensive game. You know, I thought if Purdy can connect on some of them plays, he was terrible. He, yeah, he you know he was <laughs> fucking awful up until the fourth quarter, where somebody crazy how choked the fuck up. You got to think but, about it, how bad he was, Jordan and how was great worse. somebody else was. No, Jordan was kind of worse. Jordan was worse in the fourth, not the first the fourth. three quarters. It's crazy. And, no, let's let's not forget that the interception was in the third. The first interception was in the third. No, Drew. The third. Towards the end of the third. Yeah, it, it was. was like four minutes. It was left. like late. Drew, it's funny because somebody played great, but then when they got the clutch time. He, Froze up, choked up, and somebody played. Very bad. reminiscent of my guy. Yeah, but then when it's time to put the backpack on, you know, he got did it. it. But that's just your guy. Who my guy? I don't know his guy. Your guy. Who's very guy? reminiscent of my guy. Well, for about? any quarter, any it minute, was, it was very game? reminiscent. He, uh, he might be talking about him. Tua. Oh, now man. listen, Jordan Love inexcusable. That last interception inexcusable. No, for sure, it fucking bum. Again. But um, listen, let's it's get back. To, let's, <laughs> let's get back. Let's get back to. They're gone. They're at home. They're in Cancun. Should have been being a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have. Should have. Should have. Would have. Could have. But it. You know, Reggie Miller always said it best. Don't do this. But you know, <clears throat> this this Niners team, like the Ravens, is pretty much destined to make the Super Bowl. You know, it's it just feels like. Their year this year, you know, like I said, they've been dubbed the best team in the NFC. Did you say the all Lions year. are destined? No, I think they were destined to make the playoffs and make a make a run like this, where they get to the NFC. They show people that they're here. How to they've arrived. You, what's up? Exactly. They, they, they've, they've showed that they've arrived. They're going to be one of the prominent like teams that. in the NFC. But I think the Niners, NFC built up, North specifically, talk. How many I think more the, years, the, the Niners, you know, um, built up the super team to, to make the Super Bowl. And I think you got Fred Warner, you got Javarius Ward, you know, you got Brock, you got Kittle. I'm, I'm sad Debo's not playing. But he might he not play. But know. I'll be honest, the secondary for the for the Lions is not that good. It's I think Kittle and Ayuk should be more than enough to still eat. Plus, of course, you can never forget you have CMC in the backfield. I am a little scared on that right offensive line because that that off outside of Trent Williams, which I don't know how the fact that he does it, he's able to hold that shit up the by whole himself. Thing. The whole in the thing. run game in the past is crazy. Like shout out to him. One Aiden of the Hutchinson, man. Yeah, but he Aiden Hutchinson. He's gonna Aiden go Hutchinson crazy. can dead cause some havoc. But I think Brock Purdy has a great game. I think he shows the doubt. I, I think one through four, quarter one through quarter four, he has a great game. I think Ayuk finally shows up, do something good. You know, and mm. he he plays incredible. Finally you know, he shows up. Yeah, I was gonna just say because he trolling. made one of the best yeah. catches. No, just just trolling, just, just, troll so brother. Nuts. Just trolling. But um, I think I think this offense shows reminds everybody why they were one of the best offenses. Like they have a performance. He didn't. So I got him. He didn't like that one. But I'm I'm here for it, man. Was it bittersweet? Was it bittersweet seeing? Brendan Ayuk make that catch. Like, ah, oh, my guy. That was I fire. was rooting for nothing 49ers when I was watching that game. Ayuk is stamped. Like, he's got it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. He wasn't rooting for the Niners? No. Why? Not even a little bit. Oh, okay. Because I'm a Jordan Love fan. And he also had an 18K. Yeah, he had an 18K video. I mean, he was uh, rooting for uh, nothing Dallas but to hate against him. You were. The Packers should have won the game. You know what? They these, you know what the, the problem is with you? Everything is a should have. Everything is a could have, but it's never a happens. Except it's when it's Mahomes. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's like in the NFC. Shit don't really go your way. The Cowboys should have, could have went. They didn't. Oh my. The Packers should have, could have won, what but they didn't. Rave? Jordan Love should have, could have not threw the oh pick, my. but he did. You know, it's just a lot of shit don't really go your way, but it's okay. Bro. What went your way this year? The Eagles were one of the worst oh teams my. down the stretch. Brock Cleveland. Purdy. Uh, Cleveland. Brock even Purdy. though they lost in the first round, you picked against them. Hey, listen, the agenda was, was complete. Terrible. Fuck you, The man. agenda Fuck was you. Was you try to call me and Joel every name in the fucking book for you to not, one, pick against them. Two, them get embarrassed by a rookie quarterback. I picked the Texans. You did. And don't ever cop out, bitch. Dels, let them know who had the Baltimore Ravens as the number one seed. At the preseason? Yes. I know you had Lamar MVP. He did. He's still good there. Yeah. Respect. That's the one. Well, yeah, shout out to him. It's the Ravens are, are left. You know, that's good. And you. the Niners. And the he Niners. Does, he, he, does, he said he, he, doesn't he doesn't claim the Niners. He doesn't claim the Niners. No, he doesn't have a Ravens agenda. agenda. No, don't put but that But the Ra- Lamar MVP is a double. Sure. Yeah. yeah, nah, for I sure. I'm not doubts, man. No, this was a year for me. You did well. CD Lamb, too. Don't, don't. No, you did well this, this year. This is a year for me, my brother. CJ Stroud. That was twin, but it was just like, ah, you fuck with The only I was really Mingo. And the Eagles. And the Panthers. And the Panthers. Everything Panthers. And you, too. You were drinking that Kool Aid. The Panthers were in the division. Oh, fuck God, I did. Not as much as him, though. I let them Oh, my God. I had them in the Titans. I let those sleep quietly. Like, I just sweep those under the rug. Those are my hot ones. 
I let those go. The Titans and the Panthers. Don't sleep on me, though, man. I had some, I had you had, had some year. bangers. I had back next year, man. I got final score 31-23 49ers. I think they Same covered the score spread. as the Bucks and Lions? Oh, shit. I didn't even notice. Yeah. I'm not going to I was thinking 31-21, but I'm yeah. fine with 31-23. I, I don't even I notice. I hope when I for a shootout. Scores. I would love a shootout. I think that's the way the Lions win this game. Got to score. I would love a shootout. I would love like a 38-35 type NFC championship game. So what teams do you think ranked in order are under the most pressure that are left in the playoffs? That are left. Ah, okay. To me, it's Baltimore is one. To me, it's pretty easy. Baltimore is one. San Francisco is number two. I would put Detroit three and KC four. There's I no, think Detroit's last. No, there's no pressure on Mahomes to win another. Mahomes no, no, no. I stinks. think no, no. I, I think the Lions are playing I think with house no money. There's no pressure on Detroit. I to think win. the Chiefs I are number three. three. And four are argue, like, I think they shouldn't be the list for now. Mahomes, it's where what? am I going to go all time? Yeah, what pressure does he that's have? But that's the pressure. The pressure of chasing Tom Brady. He he needs yeah, to win this point, year. He's so point. young. He's six years into his career. Brady had three at this point. He did, but it took him. It was like a 10-year gap yeah, yeah, before he well, was able to go back. the Giants ruined everything in, God, in the Midwest. They didn't, they didn't ruin anything. They didn't ruin anything. The There's Giants. pressure on the Chiefs to win this year to stamp themselves as a dynasty. They're not a dynasty yet. Why? Because they haven't won two Super Bowls in a row. You got to at least two-peat one time the in a dynasty. The Patriots, how many times they two-peated? The last time a they team two-peated was... They didn't two-peat. The, the Patriots. The last the 10 years, they didn't two-peat. I think the only reason I put the Lions above them is... Detroit's been great. I don't want to take anything away from Detroit. They Eagles. They went two. They They went two. Didn't go to one, then they won again to the Eagles. But, is but that, Detroit, that was the first go round. Is Detroit no, going to be back here every round. single year? We no, know we Kansas City is going to be here every year. Is Detroit going to be in the NFC Championship game? I know you got them NFC North the next <laughs> couple of years. We know KC is going to be here. This is, I mean, their, their season starts in the AFC Championship game. They for might KC. not be, but I think this season is good enough for Lions fans because they haven't seen it in 30 years. Haven't seen a win. Here's my idea on it I think there's different type of pressure. I think we have to. I think we should scale the list. I think Detroit. I, I really don't think there's pressure on them. I think, like you mentioned, they're playing with house money. I think the Chiefs have legacy pressure, and I think that's different from the Niners and Baltimore because okay. they haven't won it yet. I think Baltimore and the Niners have just pressure on winning it. The Chiefs, like you mentioned, they're chasing Brady. They're chasing that dynasty thing. That's a different pressure because they're 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 not on the they're on a different level than the Ravens and the Niners at this point because they've won twice. They've already been there six straight AFC Championship games. It's kind of like LeBron as a form to like um just somebody else. LeBron's chasing MJ. Somebody else is LeBron just chasing LeBron versus to be a top Harden two. getting his first Yeah, Harden's you know chasing saying? a ring to to be stamped. Uh, you know what I'm saying? LeBron trying to get his fourth ring as opposed to Harden trying to get his first. I th- so the thing was, I feel like Harden's still under more pressure in that situation. Oh, no, now, yeah. LeBron is stamped. But I'm saying, like, before LeBron won with the Lakers, there was more pressure on him to win, I think, than Harden. I think even still, there is more pressure on Harden to win another championship as opposed to LeBron. Maybe I think LeBron still has pressure. That's most definitely what Maybe I'm talking about. Year. I think LeBron still has pressure on him, similarly how I think Mahomes has pressure. And you guys convinced me. I think I would have them three for sure. But number one is the Baltimore Ravens. You have a two-time you MVP you can put at the quarterback. One low key. What, how much mm-hmm. better does the Ravens team get than this year? I think the difference is Baltimore just paid Lamar. Right, this right. is our dude. The Niners like Brock Purdy. They mm-hmm. they love Brock Purdy probably. Oh, yeah. But if they lose, it's like, well, you know, he's been great, Mr. Irrelevant. But like, we but, could go get a but quarterback. They've, but that, they've been. They've had Jimmy yeah. G. They went. They, have they lost. Been. So it's like, okay, how? And there's pressure on Brock too because. You you went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. You went with a different team, kind of still elite team. You went, you lost. Now you get Brock. Brock's probably looking like if I don't win this, they're probably gonna look at me like, am I really an upgrade from Jimmy G? So Brock's number one. No, no, I'm saying the no, Niners. No, no. You Brock's can argue number one. number one because they've already been. You could. And they're trying to win it, and they yeah. they built these teams up. They built the super team where Baltimore built. I think a little bit more organically drafting and stuff. They brought in Chase Young. They traded for CMC. So now you kind of built this team up. It's like. We built up a super team, and we still can't win. Number one as a player is Lamar Jackson. I just want to make this point about the Patriots. They won. They two-peated in 4 5 That's what I'm yeah. saying. And yeah, okay. then they won in 2015, 2017, 2019. I think they were so a dynasty three at that Super point. Bowls three in five, five years. years. Yeah. So I, I think that's what the Chiefs are chasing right now to be that dynasty, again, that third ring. That's why they're over the lines. Number two, I got the Ravens. I think as a player, Lamar Jackson is under the most pressure of any person left, but. The pressure on the Niners, I think, is way more than the pressure on the Ravens. The pressure on the Niners was to coast through the NFC and make it to the Super Bowl. And now, like what Riff said, you have to show, Brock Purdy has to show that 
he can win a Super Bowl because it's not enough just being better than Jimmy Garoppolo. You got to win. And the Niners have paid a running back. They've paid tight ends. They've paid linebackers. They've paid their all pro supporting cast. This is an all star team. I think the Ravens have a lot of talent. They're not as talented as the 49ers. The and 49ers have a little bit more talent. The Niners also showed, like you mentioned, it's not good enough being better than Jimmy G. It's not good enough just to get to the Super Bowl. Jimmy G got to the Super Bowl, and yep. a couple years later, they traded a shit ton of assets and picks. Go get Trey Lance. One not drive to away. mention One drive away, yeah, Jimmy. Just one. Fucker. Not to mention that John Harbaugh has won a Super Bowl. There's no pressure on him to really win again. I mean, he can. I mean, there's pressure to win this Slight year, pressure. but Kyle Shanahan... Yep. Has not won yet. Yep. And that's the pressure on him as a coach to win. So I just think there are more factors in play with the 49ers having more pressure than with the Ravens. That's why I have them number one. They, they got to win this year. Who's I'm the best coach in the NFL? It's Andy Reid. Andy Reid, right? And then yeah. who's after him? Shanahan? Where's McVay in this conversation? Shanahan, McVay. McVay got one is where, I, is where well, I'm getting at. McVay yet. got one. John Harbaugh, he's got one. Like, like... At one point, Shanahan is getting go, forever going to be put in those conversations because he's a great play call. But you're the only one that don't got one. It's kind of going to start. Like even McVay, you could put him up there. He has one. Even and Mike he's Tomlin, he and has he's been one. to two. There's a few. He's and been he, to two. And before before John Mayo got signed, was still the youngest coach in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Just think about that. Yeah, you gotta, he's kind of like um, trying to think somebody in the NBA trying to get a, probably Spo. Now Spo's got a few. No, I mean in terms of being young, starting so young. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Spoh's up there now. But Spoh got, had LeBron and Wade. He ain't even Kyle Shanahan has really been making the most out of the situation. What a great hire. So, yeah. One of the best. God. But with Shanahan, like, it's not it's winning, but he's blowing a lot of leads, too. I mean, you look at the Falcons with the Patriots, the Niners with the Chiefs. I think uh, the year the Rams went to the Super Bowl, the Niners and the Rams. Like, the Niners were matching up with them, and they could have won it. Stafford... Through an interception that was dropped to by Jaquissi Tart. Oh, I know you'll never forget it. No, I mean it was a back and forth matchup. And now you love Matthew Stafford. I always love Matthew Stafford, bro. I don't believe that. This is nuts. I don't I've always it. loved Matthew Stafford. I don't believe it. Or, well, you don't gotta believe it. Oh, Just I know. No, I know it's true. You're lying. I'm You're not. Lying. I'm not lying. Thank God. I'm not lying. The time I sat at this exact spot, maybe that, maybe a little bit more over there. All I said was that I didn't trust Stafford in the playoffs. He hadn't won a playoff game to that point. I never said he was a scrub. He is a turnover machine. He's a gunslinger. He throws a lot of interceptions. He, he led Josh the. Allen. He let. It's different type of interceptions. Please. Once a Super Bowl champion. Show some fucking. Stop respect. playing with just spit. Stop he fucking just, playing. Josh Allen in the playoffs don't throw interceptions. He doesn't. He and Matthew right Stafford's a playoff riser. Josh is. Well, he showed it so one time. <laughs> yeah, twice. Twice this year too. This yeah. past year. Yeah. Listen, Matthew Stafford is a great quarterback. And he had three game winning drives in that postseason run. Don't Story. forget, you told me Stafford was more of a Hall of Fame than Mahomes. At the time, I was right. At the time, he was not right. <laughs> At the time, he was not right, bro. Stafford, I, he has no MVPs, no all pros. Like, you can't be. Super Bowl champion, three game winning drives. So was Mahomes at Dude, the time. Four, four Mahomes, five thousand yards. Mahomes ha- had a Super Bowl at that time, too. He did. And MVP. Yeah. He's stamped. Come on. He's a legend. He is stamped. He he's, is. he's top five all time already. Yes. Yeah. Not better than Payton, but he's top Probably five. Top three. Mahomes. It's probably three. Three or two. Yeah. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Mahomes. I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. And if he wins this ring, he's over Peyton. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. Over Peyton already. Shut the f- I like Peyton, man. Peyton I'll, was give you, a, I'll give you the rest of the year. <laughs> okay. Peyton was a... Uh, Peyton, does it against. Peyton was a wild guy, man. I I'm like Peyton. Nuts. Comments. Shout out. Shout out. Calling you out on your bullshit Matthew Stafford love. How my... What's my BS Matthew Stafford love? You like Matthew Stafford? I no, always no, like Matthew he loves Stafford. Him. He loves him. The the debate they got in at after the Super Bowl was nuts. With the the uh, Mahomes, there, there was a lot of screaming. Yeah, yeah, that one was, was that was probably around. the most angriest I've ever seen. To be honest, I love that clip. People they were stitched mad it. Mad about it for forty five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. I hated that for you. <laughs> okay, I, I got some old clips. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna swift through them later on tonight. Matthew Stafford. I'm gonna send you a clip at three in the that morning. That season was a movie. It's gonna be from like twenty. Well, there's a, there's a clip right here. How much better does Matthew Stafford make the L.A. Rams? It's ten minutes. So based on my opinion, there I, you can see well, that at the time I think everyone was like, "This is a huge upgrade." Yeah, but he wasn't big on CMC move. We go. I'm gonna see exactly what I said. You know what was the highlight and what I know I got you. I'll never forget it. I was coming out of nursing school. Von Miller gets traded to the Rams. I switched my pick. You said I'm gonna take the Rams. They're the Super Bowl champions. The week after they <laughs> lose. The biggest mistake I've ever made in my life was <laughs> saying that, that statement. For the Bucks, right? That was with Tom Brady, though. 
still there? I don't remember. Yeah, no. Tom Brady was Tom there. Brady was still in the Bucks. Because right? that's when that's the Rams oh, yes. almost yep. blew mm-hmm. it to the Bucks. Yeah. But then, oh, would you look at that? Man, 40 seconds left. Cooked. Two plays. Oh, Matthew Cooked Stafford fucked. finds a way they blew, to sling the ball. Cooked so bad. They blew no, I, I would have been yeah. in hell. Ooh. But no, what happened? Backs against the wall. We've seen Matt Ryan in those situations. Could have stepped up to the plate and hit a homer. The real Matty Ice. <laughs> Two plays. Gets him in field goal range. Against the GOAT. Super. Nobody calls Matthew Stafford Matty Ice. Except the real. <laughs> Who's the real? Andrew Velez. One guy. Nobody knows. <laughs> if, you, if you say Matty Denver Ice Broncos to fan. 99.9% of football fans, they thinking about Matt Ryan. Stop trying to strip Matt Ryan Matt of Ryan his have the nickname. honorable Stafford's nickname. Stafford's better career. The real Matty Ice. That nickname is kind of fire. That's why, no, Matty Ice, fine. Matt, Matt Ryan. The real Matty Ice, streets now. Kind of makes sense, though. Detroit, really icy, skate. Atlanta facts. Atlanta. They play in a dome. Yeah, but it's, it's Detroit. Exactly the dome. It's no, I mean, they're, I guess they're both domes. The, but domes usually correspond with ice skating. I mean, Matty Ice inside. was given to Matt Ryan because he was <laughs> clutch, I, I think. I just lost him to ice skating shit. I'm I don't know why. I really don't know why. You do inside, do you know? I know, but I just came out of nowhere. Because well, they play in the dome, I was trying I just, to. Matt, it just when you say like someone ice is like they're just they're clutch. You know what I mean? Like ice in their veins. Oh. I will always love Matthew Stafford to Dad Croak. I'll be honest, he's from Atlanta. He was Patrick Mahomes before Patrick Mahomes too. They don't give him that Ooh. credit. Matthew Mah- Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Cool. Arm angles and shit. Mahomes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mahomes, Mahomes extracurricular shit. That's one of one. Everybody does it now. Lamar did it uh, last week. But the way that they glazed Mahomes for his arm angles now, Matthew Stafford was doing that years ago. Same way how people glaze LeBron for his weak ass tomahawks. Everybody does it. No, well, he caused that back. And Westbrook does it. Westbrook's dunk package is underrated. Yeah. Josh Richardson used to do it. Jason Richardson. Pardon. Jason Richardson. Josh what? Smith used to do it. It's kind of just Yo, like, you're spitting. Josh I, Smith I used ball. to have the cockback. Facts. I know ball. I know ball. You cool with that? That's close. Well, I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew you just said. Yeah, I know ball. I think that nickname d- dates back to college. Matty Ice? Yeah. I think. Yeah. You guys remember that Denzel Ward hit in college? Not sure. No, I didn't. Drew said Jameson's breaking out. That brother had 35 yards last game. 19 the first up. game. Let him cook uh, up. 19 cook yards up. You, the you first game. You said, you said he was horrible. You spoke out about was. him last podcast. You or did. Or were virtual after the and then the, And then the comment section is like, yo, I love how Joel's just glossing over Jameson Williams when he used to say that he was horrible. What do you mean I spoke highly? When you have a guy that fast, defenses have to respect I, that. I shouldn't say highly. Highly yeah. for you. Yeah, but is that not a fact? Tone, you call him horrible. Is he horrible? Was Answer me that. Is he horrible? He's not horrible. All right, so then that's it. I he's appreciate not, that. Because he's, he's fucking not. Never was. Okay, but he's not They're a hater. receiver one. No, they've no, Amon Ross. He's the he goat. He might not be top five. Now I'm talking about in a draft. His draft that he was drafted in. We got Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, George Drake. Pickens. Drake London. Drake London. He's better than Burks. He is. Ah, uh, maybe. Jahan's another one. Give James... If, if Jared Goff... Could fucking hit him in stride just once. It's crazy how you blaming Jared golf on this. You just said golf is playing like Mahomes. I didn't say that. I said did he not say Jared Goff playing like the best quarterback in the league? Been, he's no in the playoffs. He's been awesome. However, Jameson Williams, if he could just get hit in fucking stride, you look at that game versus the Bucks. He had not one but two opportunities. Jared Goff biffed it. Jameson Williams is good. Trade him. Get him somewhere else with a quarterback. Trade team him in outside of the team that just made Buffalo. the NFC Championship. Get him in to the Buffalo. NFC. Get him to Buffalo. Get not him the to Chargers. Buffalo. Not the Chargers. He's not going to be better than Gabe Davis on the Bills, bro. Okay, just end the show, please. What do you mean? That's end a it. fact. Just end it. That's Romeo Dobbs was in this draft class. Oh, Romeo Dobbs is better than Jameson. I don't, I don't hate Romeo. Khalil like Shakir Romeo. was in this draft class. Khalil Shakir is better than Fucking him, Fucking dog. What are we doing? <laughs> Jameson <laughs> Williams might not respect be a top him, 10 him. receiver in his draft Did class. you see that catch on third down in the end zone? Who? From Khalil? Khalil? No, Khalil's good. When he, Josh, ripped that yeah, shit. he's mad good. Who else is there, Dose? I'm going through. That, those are the only. So other it was Gary Olave, Pickens, Jahan. Love, that, love my brother. Burks was in that class. I don't know. Traylon Burks is, is really iffy. Right? It's up. It's up and down. I don't know. Khalil Shakir, Romeo Dobbs. You really are going to. It was the first round picks in the guys. Houston. Khalil really Shakir is better than Jameson. Right? But you understand the start that Jameson Williams has had to his career, correct? It's unfortunate. Yes. All right. So but can, when he's can played, we give him some time he hasn't to been good. That's not. That's not all. He's got next year. Next year's make or break. Agreed. And I'll shake on that right now. Let's give him some next year. And I'll, I'll allow you to. So what? What do we, what do we need? The to horrible do? will what always stay. A successful season. At least eight hundred. I, I agree. But okay. the horrible will always stay on you. I'll never let you live that down. So they got Laporta and Amara, But so. got Josh Reynolds. I'll allow he's, you. He's Josh Reynolds is I will allow you to support him when he's good next season. I don't Josh think I'm going to want to. I got my receivers. I'm already locked in on. I'm sorry, Jameson Williams not one of them. Who's your receivers that you like? Noted. On? Terry McLaurin. Fucking mid. Watch when he get Drake May. Sorry, because listen, I was one of the few that rode for Chris Olave, and here he is. 
I like that. You were one of the few that wrote for a top 15 draft At this pick? table. At this table. I was in the top, our top five. You didn't have me in your top five. I did. James Cook, another one I had in my top and five. And you had Williams James number Cook. one. I, he was elite coming out of college. I love James Cook. Elite. Love him. Love him to death. And he got he tore his ACL, and with the way that modern medicine works, I thought they'd be able to come back in. We've all had our misses. Uh, he's had Jamison one. I've had Burks one. You had B Rob one. It all happens. Here's the thing. Yeah, B Rob Domingo. Brian Robinson was not bad though. But you had him over Brees, Brees and you Paul was you talk shit on Brees. Some Jets fan you are. You got Kenneth Walk over him too. <laughs> yes, end the show now. End that's, it. that's not the worst thing in the world. Oh my! God. That's not the worst thing in the world. I love Brees. I love Brees. No, you don't. Wait, wait, when did James Jameson tore his ACL again in the NFL? If I'm not mistaken, no, no, no. He had the no, hammy no. injury okay. though this year. Okay, okay. He I'm, had the hammy. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. want to make sure I'm not missing something because no, the way no, you said no. it, it sounded like he was coming with a torn ACL. But this season he was coming off the hammy, but he yes. did miss what was it, eight weeks with the gambling shit. So but Dallas, how many receivers are better than Jameson in that draft though? Uh, so the first round ones is four, right outside of Traylon. If you want to say that's fifty fifty. Um, so we got Garrett, we got Chris Olave, we have Drake London. Um, are we counting Jahan Dotson? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, Christian Watson? Yep. <laughs> what do you mean? Why, why is your jaw dropped? <laughs> Christian Watson has shown more funny. in a three-game stretch than Jameson has done in his You don't career. even like Christian Watson. But he's better than Jameson. George Pickens? He's better. Got to give him his respect. Romeo Dobbs? He's better. That's Jaden Reed's better than Khalil Shakir. Too, just letting you know. You know I like Khalil Jaden Shakir. and Dontavian Wicks. That's really oh, where. Hold on, Joel. Khalil Shakir, who's better? That's Come on, I'm gonna ride with Jameson. You're an idiot. We're gonna ride to the fucking wheels fall off. Khalil's better. He's gonna be right back now. next He's season. Better. So how many is that dose? Uh, shit, it's like Wait for his breakout seven. year next year. Khalil's about to have a breakout year. I just Drake, need Josh Garrett, Reynolds off the team. I need Gabe Davis off the team. I need Josh Reynolds gone. Watson. He steals too many of his looks. It's fucking. Shakir stole looks from Stephon Diggs. Who's really better here? He'd be ninth. So Shakir nah, better than Dick? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who, who would you take, Dontavian Wicks or Jameson? Dontavian. Noted. Noted. Dontavian. Noted. You're on the list, Joel. Damian Delgado goes, who is the worst current player you can put into the league in the 50s and they can win an MVP? What? Can you ask Jerry a question fucking again? West. Okay. Or Will. Yeah, Will. The, the obvious ones. Wait, he said worst players? Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't fucking know. I'm going to go with TJ McConnell. The, who was the I think TJ McConnell Wait, was Wait, worst player I think, now? I thought, was, I thought it was opposite. I thought it was the worst player in the 50s. Can you read the thing again, bro? I got you. He said, who is the worst current oh, player you can put so into disrespect. the league in the and 50s? Answering that is so disrespectful. Andre Drummond? Oh, God, that's so disrespectful. <laughs> Andre Drummond might average 40, 50 rebounds a game. Yeah. I'm not going to answer this question. No, nah, I'll answer it for fun purposes. Worst player. I'm going to go. Hmm. I'll go Jordan Clarkson. I think he averages 40. They would think he's doing some wizardry. Back That's then. the yeah. worst player? I think so. I could probably can go lower. Oh, Jordan fucking pull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordan, yeah. They, they think he's doing wizardry. Bro, yeah. Jordan pull. I'm crying. Jordan he Poole. shut shit down in the 50s. Imagine they see the in and out behind the back. Yo, I don't know why this comment's on my, my screen right now. I might have clicked on an old video. But it says, Drew MIP, from no knowledge of the game to cussing out Riv. While trying to learn medicine, boy, you came up. Cooked. What a good comment. Come up was real. You it were was. An idiot. I was. Shout out my brother, Uzman Garuba. I'm always praying on your, your upbringing, bro. I hope you somehow, some way, figure it out and be good. Um, it's play. tragic. I know. Good defense. That's all I ever... Good defense? That's, that's all. He was supposed to be good on defense. Yeah, Christian Woodward MVP in the 50s? You let him be the central point. Of Rockets, offense? Christian Wood. <laughs> Cam Reddish? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yes. No. The brother yes. can't shoot, bro. Brother, I'll be honest. You don't need to. He could fly. You're right. He can dribble. He can. He doesn't bro, use it you, enough. You have a bag in the 50s? They don't know what you're doing. You were able to carry, though. Yeah, they would call that a lot. They had yeah. to change the rule. Yeah, they were fucking... Facts. Because eventually they did. When they, like Nate Archibald and shit came to the league, because he had it like the um, in the uh, Negro Leagues. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. You, all right. It's all right. I know. Said, though. We were all on the same page, Riff. <laughs> I don't know if we were. That's what I got to be, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, you know. Do you think the Bills championship window's closed? Oh, we're still talking about this. Um, no. So long as they have Josh Allen, uh, I will always give them a chance. And that's what that's the honest sincerity. Uh, do I think that they had a great chance this year to go and make a run? Uh, I would still say no. I still think, I still think the Ravens would have beat them in a game. Uh, but as long as you have Josh Allen, I think that you have a strong chance to compete. I know that hasn't been enough recently, but we've seen them put together some solid defenses and, and better offenses than this year, honestly, and still have a similar result. Josh Allen played Superman, 
and unfortunately it did come up short, but do I think their window's closed? That's that's disrespecting Josh Allen and his greatness and what he's able to do with the football. I still think that you can retool on the defensive side of the ball. You can still bring in a couple extra weapons for 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 Josh Allen. You saw that they drafted Dalton Kincaid. They drafted James Cook, and those are two of their primary guys that they look for. They drafted Khalil Shakira, as we just spoke about uh, last season, or two seasons ago, last season, last I think season. It was, I think it was two seasons. It was last season because last year was when Drake oh. London and Garrett Wilson were rookies. So it was last season. Uh, year two. Oh, okay. year two. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, you know, they've done things to put things in place to, to improve this roster. We've seen the offensive line improve. Shout out to Deion Dawkins. Took a huge jump in his in his uh in his game this season. I still think that they can get better. And Josh Allen continues to show why he is still at worst top two, top three quarterback in the National Football League. So interesting enough, um this, these are the guys that are gonna be free agents. You got Micah Hyde, Daquan Jones, Leonard Floyd. Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, Dane Jackson, Tyro Dotson. So a lot of their depth. Micah you know, is the only one that I think is imperative you resign. No, nah, I think Daquan Jones. Oh, and to resign. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, Cave Davis. Cave I, didn't, give, give I, I didn't name him for a reason. Give it up. Um, yeah. How's your respect? Give it up. I'll be honest. What's his disrespect? Give it up. <laughs> what do you mean? You held on to Jerry Judy for years. He cooked. He's cooked. <laughs> you cooked him. You cooked him OD. Hey, you, um, got, you got me. I think their window. But I'm actually a fan of the Broncos. The fuck are we defending Gabe Davis for? He's a big Gabe Davis. He's a guy. big Gabe Davis. He's a, he's a good player. Big game Gabe. He's a good player. He's not bad. He's a good player. Had, so is Jerry. He had six games zero zero yards. Yeah, he's a good player. Huh. He did. Huh? He had six games zero zero yards. <laughs> Get him to another system. Man. Oh, Jerry, Jerry Josh, Josh yes. Allen's not going <laughs> to. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I think their window can always be when you have a top three quarterback, top five quarterback. Your window can always be open. It's really football. It's imperative of how you build the team, you know, and I think Sean McDermott is not going to get fired. I think they'll keep him. Yeah. I think this defense is old, though, and I think this is this is probably going to be one of their most important drafts coming up because I think this defense is old. It is a little watered down. You know, you did bring in Razul Douglas midseason who helped your defense tremendously, but his defense was banged up all this year. You know, Vaughn Miller, in hindsight, is a horrible contract that they gave him. You know, they got a lot of guys. Daquan Jones, he helped out. Floyd, he helped out. These are free agents. 32, 31. Micah Hyde. I think uh, Jordan is also a free agent. But all over 30 years old, you know, you got to start bringing in young talent. And even Gabe Davis. You know, I know Gabe Davis is a good player, all trolling aside. But you got to rely on them young guys. Shakir, Dalton. Dawson Knox, I think he's a great weapon for Josh. They did pay him. They'll probably keep him. And then you got one more year at Diggs. You need to draft well. I think this year is the most important year for you to draft well. You need to draft high. You know, you got Cooks in the backfield. You now established. You can run the ball. You know, that offensive line is really, really good. And they they, they, they hold it down in a run game. So you can run the ball. Now it's just about bringing in another weapon on offense, building up that defense, build it young, build it strong in the draft. And um, Sorry, like it. Just how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got White, who tore his ACL again, who's also hitting up there in age. So you got, you got a lot of guys on the older side, which, is like like Dells mentioned, it's not really my vibe. I like to play the young role. You know, so I think it's time for... That. Yeah, I think it's time for Buffalo That's to... gotten some people in trouble. Yeah, some guys, you know, they just don't know what they're doing. But, you know, shout out to the Bills. They just need to retool a little bit. And I think they'll, they'll have a strong championship window. I thought last year was the Bills' best chance... To really go on a deep run well this year this past season because now josh allen's cap hit gets enormous ah, fuck. his cap hit is going to be 47.1 million next season the von miller contract Before you continue i didn't see steph hit a three to start the game in weeks <laughs> we're here are you fine Cox. we're back after the you know rip him yo question uh no trey young uh out indefinitely what's happening with our bet god forbid how many games He's been out for a minute. Well, Jonte's like, been hit game winners though. He has, he has been. So you, I feel like we should, night. You stay I love that. Oh, Hold I love on, that. give me one sec. Give me one sec. It, the, the pull up uh, Haslam <laughs> night. I was so happy, bro. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Joel. Von Miller was one of the worst contracts that I've ever seen a franchise give out to a player. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is. He is. What? Just hit a three. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. Von Miller has been trash. He's washed and Zero sacks, ex exceptional sacks. career, Hall of Famer, first ballot. Four. But the Bills are still paying him next season. He's going to have a $23 million cap hit, dead cap of 15 mil. You still got to bite up. some money. Respect the legend. He's a legend. Fuck. He's ass now. At the time when the he Bills gave him the contract, it was he a big was. overpay. They, they overpaid for him, and they gave him a ton of years. On the back end, the years really didn't matter much. 
I look at the amount of free agents this team has, the lack of game changers that this team has. They have a sound defense, but they don't have game changers. Like I think Ed Oliver is fine. I think he's good. Rousseau is good. They're not game changers. Razul Douglas is good. Trey White, when he's healthy, is good. Not necessarily game changers anymore. Matt Milano. Matt, L- Matt Milano is a game changer, yeah. but as a linebacker who's under size, having having to ask him to stay healthy through 17 games and end the playoffs is a lot to ask of somebody that's undersized at the linebacker position, and he's at the point of contact almost every other play. I just don't know how much the Bills improve. I think the one thing that is going to probably hold them afloat is the AFC East. We don't know what the Patriots are going to be. The Jets with Aaron Rodgers, I'm hoping we're going to be a much better team next year, but that might just be one year of Aaron. And the Dolphins, we're not sure yet. Vic Fangio just left them as D.C., and he did some good things with them once they got Jalen Ramsey back. So I look at the Bills and I say, well, because they're in the AFC East and they have the best quarterback, they're always going to have a chance. But at the end of the day, I don't think that they're going to have a roster to compete with the top teams in the AFC. Once Burrow was healthy with the Bengals, with KC, because of how well Brett Veach drafts. We're talking about a team in KC who Brett Veach, even after Mahomes' cap hit, kicked in his new of his new contract. They drafted Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, two of the best at their positions. They drafted Trent McDuffie. They have been able to hit on all pro players, not just impactful guys. And I think that's what Buffalo is lacking a bit. That's fair. I do think if you have Josh Allen, the window is always going to be there. And really, their boogeyman has been the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, it is hard to say the championship window is closed when it really just looks like one team they can't get past. I understand Burrow, Lamar Jackson, um, these dudes, you know, they're going to be in the conversation for years. But for right now, Buffalo just hasn't been able to get past Kansas City. And while there can be a, a talent discrepancy down the road, you just need plays from other people to beat KC, right? I, I look back and think how Mahomes lost in the playoffs in the Super Bowl in previous years. Against the Bengals, defense forced four. Excuse me, defense forced two interceptions, and McPherson goes four four field goals. Yep. Everyone else outside and Burr, of course, was great. But I'm saying outside the quarterback, they stepped up. When we lost against the Bucks. We knew how terrible the offensive line was damaged. How beat up they were. They were able to get to Mahomes constantly. Thirty pressures. Mahomes threw two interceptions. That was a blowout loss. And then the Patriots game, right? You know that was Mahomes' was rookie year. I want to say. Yep. Um, that was a back second and forth year, game. First second year, first year mm-hmm. starting. That was a back and forth game. But the uh, they get that offsides call in the fourth quarter. God bless by D Ford that just gets them because uh, other than that they probably would have gone on. It was a pick. The game was over. Game would have been over. So you need things to happen from non quarterbacks to beat Mahomes. But you can't see that's the truth of the matter. You know I don't think this is rocket science, but I think a lot of people um, are being a bit premature with the Bills because Josh Allen year in and year out is going to be a top three quarterback. He's going to be top three, top five. We'll see what happens with Stephon Diggs, but as long as you have talented guys around him. Josh Allen's going to be able to elevate dudes. And this game was really the Bills at the end of the game kind of stalling out. Because when I, when I look at this game, the Kansas City game that is, the Chiefs score in drives, 7 plays field goal, 10 plays field goal, 5 plays touchdown, 6 plays touchdown, 8 plays touchdown. We mentioned this right after the game. The Bills, on the other hand, all of their scoring drives were 10 plus plays, 14 plays, 11, 12, 15, 16. They had three times the amount of third downs faced than Kansas City. They had they went for it on fourth down three times, but minus the fake punt, they went for it Please twice. And to their credit, they were fifty percent on third down. They were two for two on fourth down, minus the punt. But then in the fourth quarter, they had two drives where they go three and out. So they were able to get these third downs first, second, third quarter. But in the fourth quarter, when they really needed to get points on the board, they weren't able to do it. Then the final drive, they did pick up a third down and pick up a fourth down, but then stall out at the end. Josh Allen had a guy open for a touchdown. Chris Jones made a good play. And on third down, they stalled out. So this was Kansas City really, I think, having their way with Buffalo's defense to an extent. I didn't really feel like they were put in positions. They faced five third downs the whole game. There wasn't a lot of times where Mahomes was under a lot of pressure, not from the pass rush per se, but just the moment of the game where they had to have it in third down situations. They were playing ahead of the sticks a lot of the time. So I look at really the talent around Buffalo, um, around Josh Allen, I mean, and what you're saying is true. The cap hit, the 40 plus million dollars, it, it's going to play a factor. But we've seen year in and year out. You're able to restructure it. You're able to move money around and pick up players where needed. So I think as long as you have Josh Allen, you can be in that conversation. It's just about getting over the boogeyman. It's about getting over Patrick Mahomes. And you're needing to have a game, whether you're able to hire brilliant coordinators down the line, whether you're able to get a diamond in the rough in the late first round, second, third round. If you're able to hit on a couple of those things, and then in that moment against 
Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Burrow, whoever it might be. You need those dudes to step up. You need your field goals. You need your special teams to be perfect. You need to get a punt return touchdown. That's what we see from these teams. you got to have big moments in big games. I want to mention this, and this is going to be the last topic of the show. Brian Callahan going to the Titans as a head coach. Mm-hmm. I really love that move. That's amazing. Yeah, I love Brian Callahan. He was OC for the Bengals, yep. but he grew up in a football family. His his father is Bill Callahan, who's a legendary offensive line head coach. The knock on him right now, and this is where I just want to give Titan fans some hope. I think he's he's a better candidate than Bobby Slowick. I think because he didn't call plays, he doesn't get that recognition. But Brian Callahan has worked with the Bengals, OC, for five years. Mm -hmm. Before that, he was an assistant in Denver. Pam Manning vouched for him back then saying he thinks he's going to be a head coach. I I know. I was (laughs) thinking that too. But um, Callahan was in charge of the Broncos' protection at the time. And Callahan always had Pam Manning prepared for any pressure look. And he taught, he brought those things he learned from there to the Bengals. Bengals have not had a good offensive line since Joe Burrow's been there. And their protection plan has been the biggest reason why Joe Burrow's been able to still play at a high level. He spent hours finding blitz looks, drawing them up, present, presenting them to Payne Manning. And Payne Manning was very critical. He was a perfectionist. He worked as a quarterback coach in Oakland and Detroit with Derek Carr and Matthew, Matthew Stafford. Mm-hmm. And before Payne Manning... He was with the Broncos, and he helped the Broncos build an offense around Tim Tebow, who was a very limited quarterback who couldn't throw it at an NFL level, and he built an offense around him. From all the things that I've seen Brian Callahan do, he's somebody that's adaptable. He's not stuck in his ways. And Mike Vrabel was an excellent head coach. I thought Mike Vrabel was a little old school. He's going to run it too much. He's not going to pass it as much as I'd like him to. And I think with Brian Callahan, with his stops in Denver – with Cincy, they changed around their offense entirely in 2022 in the middle of the season. He was a big part of that. For the Bengals, he's responsible for base down game plan and red zone plays and the protection plan. He's a West Coast disciple coming from that Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan tree. He learned under Gary Kubiak. I think this is a hire that really is not getting talked about a lot, but I think it could be a really great hire for the Titans. And this is the most important part of the will 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 levis development plan getting an offensive coach in there last year tennessee's offensive line was trash so now you bring in somebody who's been able to scheme up protection for an offensive line that's been bad but not only that his father there's a chance he's gonna be on staff he's there's a chance he goes to work in tennessee and if bill callahan is the offensive line coach or an offensive assistant whatever his his title his title is going to be He's one of the legendary offensive line coaches. Yep. That offensive line in Tennessee can turn around quickly. Very. It was terrible last year. Some dudes. Yeah, and if you have and if you have Will Levis, who I think he's very talented, if you can just get a little bit more around him offensively and you can make the game easy for him, then he could take a, a sizable leap in, in year two. So the maps are down twenty three. Yeah, I'll, I'll cry. Um, I think, and I was I was reading up on him because me and Drew were talking about him a little bit in the car once again while Dells was running late. Uh, worked with you know Peyton Manning, <laughs> Joe Burrow, Matthew Stafford, Derek Gar. Wor- worked for my with my boy Jake Brown and two you know best quarterback on the Bengals for sure. Might be his most shining accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they went yeah. four or three as, as a star. I think the most important part is that the Tennessee Titans are going into a new direction. You know they relied heavily on Derek Henry and Ryan, T- Ryan Tanner was a good quarterback, but they were more of a run heavy offense. You know put. The, Derrick Henry relied heavily on him and then worked off him. Ryan Tannehill, they had A.J. Brown, they had Julio there for some time. You know, but now, like Drew, uh, Joel mentioned, you know, putting the full development in Will Levis to see what they got, you know, kind of shifting this new Titans era, starting with Will, start with Callahan. I think it's important that you, you know, develop your quarterback as much as possible, you know, give him as much help as you need. And in a division where you got young studs like C.J. A.R. and Trevor Lawrence, you kind of need Will Levis to pop. And so you need to put the the best guy equipped to do it. And for a guy, like you mentioned, Peyton Manning, Joe Burr, Matthew Stafford, and Derek Carr, that's damn near, that's three Hall of Famers, possibly four, you know, and one who's top three ever, you know, and Joe Burrow is a top five quarterback in the league. So, like, he's he's worked with some incredible company, and Jake Browning was one of the best backups last year. You know, so this guy, he knows his work. He knows what he's doing. And Will is in good company because, like I mentioned, that division in terms of quarterback play is going to be no joke for 10, 15 years. It's tough to uh, 
figure out when a guy doesn't call plays because you have Mike McDaniel didn't call plays in San Francisco. Yeah. In San Francisco. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett didn't call plays in Green Bay. Uh, so you kind of have both ends of the stick there where one was a A-plus home run higher and the other one got fired, you know, three months into the season. So Bill Callahan, you know, it's hard to figure out what he'll be schematically, offensive-wise, but I do like that they're going to go in an offensive direction. And Zach Taylor had, I think, a, a really, you know, shining quote on Bill Callahan. One of the reporters asked him. Brian. Excuse me, Brian. Pops. Yeah, Brian Callahan. Um, they asked him about the lack of play calling. Like, does that, do you think that should be a negative to him? And this is what Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor said. He said, he needs to call plays. Why? Nobody can say that. It's something people parrot around there. He's been the coordinator here for five years. He coordinates everything having to do with it. He establishes the whole structure of our offense. On game day, he and I are in constant communication. That is calling plays. That is establishing an offense. He knows everything I go through on a daily basis as a head coach. He and I both. He's as prepared as anybody can be prepared for it. So if Zach Taylor is going to say that, and Zach Taylor has shown these last two, three years to be one of the you know better offensive coaches and one of the better head coaches, period, in the NFL when you deal with the injuries, uh, the offensive line, um, so if Zach Taylor is going to give his stamp, I have to trust it. And, of course, I'm a, I'm a guy who I think should go with the offensive side of the ball, especially when you have a young quarterback. TBD on Will Levis, I don't think he's shown enough that you could have blind faith in him being a franchise quarterback like we do with a guy like C.J. Stroud in the same division. But he's shown flashes, and coming out uh, as a prospect, the arm talent was there. He's got some mobility to him, some athleticism. He has this gunslinger-like mentality that could get in trouble. We've seen that in the past during the season. But he has the talent to do it. So it's really about having a coaching staff that could, you know, kind of hone in on some of those areas of mistake of, of being reckless with the ball at times and also putting some weapons around him. You have DeAndre Hopkins, who has one year left on his contract, I want to say. Traylon Burks hasn't been great up to this point, and you're going to be losing out on Derrick Henry, and you really just have Tajay Spears left. So they have some work to do weapons-wise, and offensive line, they have a ton of work to do. Getting his pops to be able to come out of retirement um, would be a huge step. But I think they need talent on the offensive no line more than anything. Coaching is going to help, but they need some talent. They probably have the worst tackles in the NFL. Um, but overall, I like the hire. And for a division that is loaded with offensive talent, with offensive coaches, I think this is the right way to go. Uh, with all things considered, I think that this has potential to be top three head coaching signings. Uh, of course, I say top three because you're going to have Belichick sign. You're going to have Harbo sign. Ben Johnson can be in this conversation. But why I love this so much is because you're getting into the new modern day NFL. And when you look at what they were lacking, the Tennessee Titans is a little bit of modernity. What are you going to do to, to progress in the modern day NFL? You look at what's going on with the Texans. Uh, of course, they are with D'Amico Ryans as their head coach. But C.J. Stroud, and we understand how much that offense has elevated that team as a whole. Shane Steichen now with the Colts. They were a game away from making the playoffs. What are we going to talk about them in that regard of how offense is going to be the main driving force of some of these teams? Doug Peterson over there with the Jaguars. They were able to turn around in his second in Trevor Lawrence's second season where they were able to make the playoffs. Fell short this year, but we understand that they had a direction and very quickly they were able to turn it around. With the Tennessee Titans, you already mentioned how Bill Callahan can potentially be on the staff, automatically help their offensive line. That is imperative that they do so because they have one of the worst offensive line units in the National Football League, have had that for the last couple of seasons. I do agree with you, though, Joel, that there is a lacking of talent both on the offense and defense. The defense more so in the secondary where they do need to find some refinement there, but more so refinement in Will Levis. And I think that's why Brian Callahan is such a great great addition to this team because of the, the the past quarterbacks that he's worked with. You already mentioned Peyton Manning, Derek Carr, Matthew Stafford, Joe Burrow, Tim and, Tebow. and Tim Tebow for sure. Fire. Legend, Denver I legend. I love him wholeheartedly. I wish he was still in the NFL, Tebow. but I understand he's not, not that good, <laughs> but <laughs> for Tebow, if he's in the Taysom NFL. Hill, um, quarterback, Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill role. Uh, that'd be elite. But one of the reasons why I feel like he did get this head coaching job, Jake Browning for the fact that they were able to play winning football with a backup quarterback, and obviously not the level of Joe Burrow play, but, hey, he gave you a much better showing of what you were anticipating from him. So with Will Levis, we understand he does have a skill set to be good in this league, but it's about refinement, and I think that with Brian, the two can work together. With DeAndre Hopkins still being there for one more season, now we can see Traylon potentially get a boost in this offense with Again, more of a modern approach to the NFL and, and, and play calling. I'm with you, Joel. I am hoping and praying as well. Tajay Spears is an explosive player. The offense needs to get 
in the right position before they can really start to solidify their defense. But we know that their run unit is still a, a, a solid unit in the league, but it's that secondary. Finding finding ways to, to cover up the holes in that regard. But Brian Callahan is an excellent addition. One of my favorite hires of this offseason early on, of course. But I think that the Titans are trying to set themselves up for what the future of the NFL is, and that's finding an offensive mind. Because if you have an offensive mind – as an offensive coordinator and your defensive, your your head coach's defensive guy, you're going to see that coordinator go. We saw that with Tennessee early on with Mike Vrabel and, of course, Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith, thank you very much. So history's already shown that that can bite them in the ass. So they said, hey, we're going to X the middleman. Let's bring in an offensive mind, and we don't have to worry about this, hopefully, for, for a, a long time coming. But excellent hire from the Titans. I love this new approach. Now, before we wrap up the show, just roundtable predictions for – the NFC and AFC Championship games. Riv, I'll start with you. For the NFC Championship game, I got the Niners taking it. I, I'll give a score. I'll go Niners 31, and I'll go Detroit 17. A little, little funny blowout score. And then in the AFC Championship game, I got the Baltimore Ravens taking it over the Chiefs 24-21. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm definitely going to be taking the Baltimore Ravens in this one versus the Kansas City Chiefs. I think it'll be an excellent game going with a score of 24-17. I think it's a battle of the defenses. I just think that right now I trust Lamar Jackson and company a little bit more. And with Mark Andrews, what it seems like he's on trajectory to play, that's a huge boost on the opposite side. No Tooney. That's going to hurt. Pass rush is going to be a bitch for them. But in this Niners versus Lions game, I'm going with the Niners. I think that Brock Purdy found something in that last drive of the game versus the Packers that he's going to use to carry over into this Lions matchup. Offense will be a lot more refined, and I think they'll come away with this one 31-21. I like the Niners in the NFC Championship game. I think it'll be a bit closer than people anticipate. I got the Niners, though, 28-24. to 24. In the AFC, it's Baltimore. It's always been Baltimore. Lamar Jackson is going to get his first Super Bowl appearance, then his first Super Bowl win. I got them winning 28-21. to 21. Patrick Mahomes is going to lead the Chiefs to another Super Bowl, and they're going to win the AFC Championship, and they're also going to win the Super Bowl because Mahomes is getting his third ring this Jackson. year. I respect Lamar Jackson, but I feel like you guys disrespecting Patrick Mahomes, not giving him a chance in this game. Right? I am giving him a chance. You're losing about seven points at, at minimum. He'll seven he'll points. he'll cover the spread. That's Patrick Mahomes. They, Patrick lost, Mahomes. they lost by two touchdowns to the Broncos. I said 24 21 Baltimore. Well done, bro. I like that better. That's a better Three score. Points, man. The Chiefs are going to win this game, and Mahomes is going to solidify his legacy. They're going to run on Baltimore. They're going to play great defense and get pressure on Lamar Jackson, and Mahomes is going to have a legacy defining game. They're going to the Super Bowl. They're on the other side. The Lions match up well with the Niners, but the Niners are more talented. They're going to win this game. Brock so, Purdy doesn't have two back to back So fuck your bracket. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I respect yeah. that. Simple. Did oh. you have the Ravens go? He did. I did have the I Ravens. I the whole thing. Did you have them beating the Chiefs or did you have did. the Chiefs? Losing? I did have them beating the Chiefs. He, fuck his bracket. So what's changed? The Chiefs' You've offense the, the last way. two weeks has been. But I, didn't you expect awesome. that because you had them winning? No. I think they the could have won. Ugly. also got overrated. They could have. I mean, you say that every year. I mean, I don't know. I and I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. And I'm right. You think so? Yeah. I said the Bills would fall off. They won the division. They got. They were. They lost enough. <laughs> and against the page, uh, against the Steelers, they didn't look good. Well, against the Dolphins, they did. Again, they barely looked good. They beat them twice. The offense did not look good. Honestly, they beat them by thirty one time. Well, that was week three when they were healthy. Week four, excuse me. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Three Pick a Side pod. Podcast. You guys can Wasn't follow three? us on oh, Instagram Lord. and TikTok at Pick a Side Podcast, on Twitter at Pick a Side Pod. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Oh, I wasn't clapping for the show. We got to clap for the guy that died.